in pursuit. Vehicle failed to stop. And out in force. <laughs> this is Police Interceptors. Stay there as you get gassed. Following every move of Cheshire's elite crime-fighting units. Stay there! Please retain them! We put you in the front seat with their pursuit drivers. Left, 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 on the five, three, four. On the hunt with their dog units. All right, mate, all right, mate. Ringside as they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the bad guys. Get off your legs! Put your arm behind your back! Please stand behind everybody! Buckle up. Set tasers to stun and stand by to intercept. Get your arms up now! Another day at the office. Coming up on police interceptors. Vehicle failed to stop, Chester rolled, halt. A dangerous disqualified driver crash, he's crashed. throws the life of an unborn baby into jeopardy. She's walked off somewhere. She's pregnant now. A late night scuffle spirals out of control. He just said I've done nothing. And Jim's on the hunt for a wanted man. Don't run, mate, should be tasered. Some disqualified drivers show a total lack of respect for the law by getting behind the wheel, despite being banned. Just take a seat in the rear of the passenger side, please. Disqualified drivers probably do pose more of a risk, mainly because they're disqualified for a reason. So if you then choose to carry on driving, well, you're risking getting stopped by the police and arrested. It's the interceptor's job to target these dangerous lawbreakers. But the penalty for disqualified driving is often so severe, some criminals will do anything to avoid capture. Out the car! It's mid-afternoon in Holt, a village 11 miles south of Chester. Interceptors Dan Halliwell and Gordon Morris are sat up keeping tabs on a motor they believe is being used by a band driver. We're currently in the Farndon area because um, there's been a couple of intel reports of a, a male who's driving a black Mercedes which is parked up over there with cars not registered to him and it's not insured to him either. He's a disqualified driver. This is no ordinary disqualified driver. Their target man has recently been released from prison for dangerous driving, driving without insurance and failing to provide a breath sample and he's still on a ban. I don't like disqualified drivers because at the end of the day they shouldn't be on the road. Dan's a highly trained pursuit driver. His experience and cool head could come in very useful this afternoon. And with 22 years police work under his belt, his crewmate Gordy's nicked more illegal drivers than he cares to remember. But today the interceptors are hoping to get more than they bargain for, as they have intelligence to suggest the band driver may also be transporting drugs in the car. See if he gets in the car and uh, get it stopped and get him dealt with for it, for the driving offences. And obviously if there's any evidence uh, for other offences, we'll deal with that at the same time. It's now a waiting game. As if by magic. Yeah, that was him. Dan's convinced he just clocked their suspect climbing into the murk. That was definitely him. 110% that was him. It looks like it's their man, but Dan suspects he's also seen the disqualified driver's girlfriend getting into the passenger seat. Why would she get in the car and let him drive? No insurance. He's turning round. The, uh, the Mercedes that we've been sat up on is just gone. The interceptor's unmarked crime car means their target has no idea he's being tailed. They've now got the proof they need that the bloke is driving despite being banned. We'll get him here, shall we, and then she can get out of the car and walk back to her own car. Yeah. The boys bang on the blues and plan to block him in at the junction and make the arrest. Avoiding a pursuit is their priority. Mate, he's going. <laughs> Leave me uniform, 132, urgent. <laughs> Flooring it across the curb, this disqualified driver is clearly dangerous and, for whatever reason, is intent on getting away at all costs. Vehicle failed to stop, Chester rolled, halt. 
towards Fawndon. One male driver, one female passenger. Stand by. The pursuit the interceptors hope to avoid is now very much a reality. Next heavy turn, left, left, left onto Green Street. We're a double crew crime car, T Pack multi, multi lane stinger train, advanced drivers. On uh, left, 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 cross street towards Castle Street. Despite having his girlfriend in the passenger seat, the disqualified driver is doing loops of these residential streets at speed. Speed 50, 60. Oh my God, I've got number two coming. Another. Yeah, it's now Castle Street towards the 534. Can you notify North Wales, please, and air support? 50 mile an hour still. Dan and Gordy fear the band bloke's dangerous driving could suggest he's also got drugs on board. Name your uniform, we're Wrexham Road, heading towards the 534. Stand by for location, uh, direction of travel. Left, left, left onto the 534. An illegal left turn and the Merc is now on an A road. Gordy and Dan suspect the driver will now go all out to lose them on the straight. Do we have any other vehicles making towards us at all? Worryingly, the disqualified driver's Merc is built for speed and the bandit prepares for a series of desperate overtakes. Go, go, go. Speed in excess of nine zero miles per hour. Traffic is light at the moment. 110, one one zero. Now up to 110, traffic is light. We are happy to continue. Have we got air support on route, please? Go, go. Is it clear? Go. Dan and Gordy are concerned the driver's willing to take any risk to try and escape capture, so they sit back and give him some space. That was close. How he avoided a head-on with the oncoming lorry is nothing short of a miracle. Go, go, go. Hang on, hang on. I can't see, mate. I'll... It's all right. No, you can. Lima Uniform 132, still 534 towards Carden. Speed in excess of 100. Traffic is still light. The bloke's showing no sign of slowing down. For everyone's safety, the interceptors back off even further as they know he's an accident waiting to happen. He's probably going to go right at the, uh, the top of this. Yeah. He's crashed, he's crashed, crashed. He's crashed, crashed. He's gone there, he's gone the pub. He's gone the pub, he's gone the pub. The band drivers crashed the Merc and he's now fleeing on foot. I'll go round the other way. There's a floor to the dog, please. He's gone to the other field. Stop! Leave a uniform, 132 urgent. Vehicle failing to stop, Chester Road halt. Interceptors Dan and Gordy have been in pursuit of a reckless disqualified driver in a black Mercedes. Left, left, left onto the 534. Despite having his girlfriend in the passenger seat, the band bloke pulled off a series of desperate manoeuvres. That was close. Go, go, go. Hang on, hang on. I can't see, mate. I'll... It's all right. No, you can. Speed in excess of 100. It's crashed, it's crashed, it's crashed. Go, it's crashed. He's gone there, he's gone the pub. He's gone the pub, he's gone the pub. After a high-speed smash, the driver fled on foot. Gordy was quick off the blocks, but despite his best efforts, he's lost sight of the driver. That's a plot to the dog, please. He's gone to the other fields. But all is not lost. In the crime car, Dan heads back to check on the well-being of the female passenger. 
Mel is on foot. On foot. Shockingly, the suspect darts across the road right in front of the interceptor. Get down on the floor now! Gordy can hear Dan's commentary on the radio and makes a desperate charge to help out his crewmate. Turn around! Put your hands behind your back! Hell detained inside the house. Sorry, love. Come running into your house. The disqualified driver ran into an 86-year-old lady's house, leaving her petrified. Luckily, Dan grappled him to the ground. Have an ambulance, please, for the female. I'll let you know how she is in a second. Have an SIO out here as well, please. But they're not out of the woods yet. With the bloke secured in the back of the cop car... Right, mind your head. Gordy's concern is now for the bloke's girlfriend, who was in the passenger seat when the car crashed. Everybody all right? Yeah, it's a high-speed collision. I'm just going back to see how she is. There's no sign of the girlfriend. Unbelievably, the seat belts of the crippled car were clearly not being worn at the time of this high-speed impact. There's chance the fleeing girlfriend could have sustained serious injuries. Gordy, she's left the vehicle walking. Which way has she gone? Across the road there. And the disqualified driver is about to drop a frightening bombshell. Oh, dude, she's pregnant. She's pregnant? She's pregnant, you've drove like that. You shouldn't teach me. You are a dick. Pregnant. She's walked off somewhere. She's pregnant now. Dan's crime car camera captured her walking away moments after the high speed crash. With no idea where she is or what condition she's in, this is the last situation Dan and Gordy want to end up in. The chopper has been lifted and is combing the area. Other ground units are also en route to help with the search. What's she wearing? What's she wearing? She's wearing a little dress. She's wearing a little dress. Coat? What colour hair has she got? Is he brown? Brown. With no luck from the eye in the sky, Dan's got an idea. Could their best chance of finding her be by calling her mobile phone? Do you know her mobile number so we can check she's all right? I'm going to put it in my, in my phone, on my, in my pocket, you know? Whilst Gordy continues to search the surrounding area, wherever the girlfriend's gone, Dan's hoping she's going to pick up the phone. Just ringing her now. Fearing the worst, Dan knows just how much he's riding on this phone call. Hello? Hello? Sorry? We're not interested in her, we just want to make sure that she's safe and well. Did you hear that? Yeah, they're not interested. She needs to get the baby checked. Yeah, anything, but you, you haven't done anything, didn't you, so just come, come back over with the ambulance and uh, you'll be all right. Thankfully, the girlfriend has agreed to head back to get herself and her unborn baby checked over. But it's now been 15 minutes since the crash. With the clock ticking, it's an anxious wait to see if she keeps her word and shows up. His girlfriend's just tipped up now. Um, heavily pregnant, as you can see. There's a sigh of relief all round. And looking at the state of the car, it's a miracle she's alive, let alone able to walk. Whilst the girlfriend is seen to by the paramedics, Dan can finally deal with the driver responsible for all this carnage. You're under arrest and suspicion of driving whilst disqualified, failing to stop and dangerous driving and driving without insurance, you understand? You don't understand which bit? None of it. None of it. Dangerous driving. Mate, don't waste your breath. I'm if you don't understand, I've got to explain it to you. I don't consent to any of it, mate. You're locked up anyway. Yeah, My priority now is not him, not her, it's the baby, um, because unfortunately that's the, the innocent party in here and it's just damn right reckless what he's done. After being assessed by the paramedics, Thankfully, the girlfriend was given the all clear. In court, the bloke was convicted of disqualified driving, dangerous driving and driving with no insurance. He was sent to prison for 16 months and when he finally does get out, he's got a further three years and eight months driving ban to look forward to. 
A search of the car didn't reveal any drugs, and the interceptors are still not sure why the girlfriend left the scene of the accident. Gordy and Dan are just happy to get this menace off the streets. As the interceptors assess the mangled Merc, once again it just goes to show the desperate lengths these disqualified drivers are willing to take to avoid getting collared. I believe you've noticed, but you see the damage to the back of the car. I think he's been right up the bank with us. Well, he said he's flipped it. He said the front's gone up in the air, uh, down in the, on the ground, the back end's gone he's up. He's lucky he didn't spin this. And obviously, the other issue is he's come barreling up this road. If anybody had been coming the other way, yeah, yeah. crossing this junction, yeah. we're looking at fatal, easily. A, fa a fatal road collision. Yeah. The lad's an absolute idiot. Yeah, he could have killed her and the baby. No, he's not. <laughs> Beggar's belief, doesn't it? There's little that satisfies an interceptor more than nicking a wanted criminal. Stop! But whether lying low or on the run, these law dodgers know every trick in the book to avoid the boys and girls in blue. Well, it, it depends on the individual. I mean, sometimes uh, there's people who really do the best to try and avoid being arrested. So you turn up, and next thing they're on the toes, they're gone. The people who fail to appear at court are the ones who just don't want to be caught, don't want to spend any time in prison. Either they know they're going back to prison because they're on licence. But when the interceptors do finally catch up with these warrant dodgers, they don't always come quietly. Get your hands out now! It's just gone three at Congleton Police Station and the start of the shift for interceptor Jim Hunt. And no sooner has he clocked on, an off-duty interceptor has spotted a wanted man a few streets away in Congleton Town Centre. He's wearing a, um, a red bobble cap. A red dirt woolen hat. So uh, he's going towards Bromley Road, which is just up here. The cops have been trying to catch this wanted fella for a while, so Jim knows he can't afford to let him slip through the net. Yeah, appreciate that. It's quite quick and dynamic. Um, I've just had the information that was literally tipped out from the net. As one of the most experienced interceptors in the team, Jim knows the window of opportunity to lock up this law dodger is getting slimmer by the second. The crafty criminal was last spotted just a couple of minutes ago in the town centre, wearing a red bobble hat. So he's, he's got to be in the local area, he's either that or in the shops. Um, so it's just a case of, uh, of dropping on him. Notify him CCTV, because he is in the local area, literally. Um, he was on the high street going towards Bromley Road about uh, two or three minutes ago received. It seems the slippery suspect has vanished into thin air. It's just a case of finding a bloke with a red bobble hat now. We wouldn't have got this far in this amount of time. As Jim begins to think the wanted blokes are wannabe Houdini, the off-duty interceptor who made the initial sighting rolls up with some good news. Behind you, mate. Behind me, where? I stood with a lad with a bike, a mountain bike, that, that way. Over there? Just on the right-hand side of the road. He's got, like, a body warmer on. All right. The red bobble hat is now a red body warmer. 433, I've just been told um, he's on the high street, wearing a body warmer. Stand by. Jim's got a lead, but can he collar his criminal? Oh, mate, what's your name? Adam. OK, don't run, mate, because you'll be tasered, OK? Hey, why are you going to taser me? I'm not tasing you, mate. I'm just saying you're under arrest, because you wanted. Claim to appear warrant. Oh, OK, right. mate? Yeah, that's fair. Lovely jubbly. Despite giving the cops the runaround for the last two months, this likely lad doesn't seem too bothered about getting nicked. Nothing sharp in your pockets, anything like no. that, fella? No. And his placid demeanour is about to come to an end. I've got nothing on me, mate. All right. Yeah, so you can take me, can't you? All right, I'm just searching you, mate, aren't I? Yeah, you don't need to. Mate, I do need no, to, you fella. Don't to, don't you, you can search me back at the station, can't you? Mate? Yeah, I'm just saying you can search me back at the station. Come over here. Let me get one thing yeah, straight, sunshine. You. Mate. Don't, don't hit me like that, like. Let me get one thing no, straight, fella. There's no point manipulating me. Josh. Josh, can you tell Daz I've been nicked? Get hold of him on Facebook. Jim is far from impressed by the bloke's attitude. He's either just trying to be difficult or he's got something to hide. You're being searched, mate, before you get in the car. Do you understand, mate? Yeah, I've got nothing on me, so why... But why are you I getting twitchy when I start you. searching your because, legs, mate? Because you're searching me in the street, mate. I live yeah, around here. Yeah, you're under arrest, it's mate. Right. Yeah, why? 
You got under arrest for a warrant? Yeah, for a warrant, not for drugs or anything like that. So you don't need to search me, do you? I don't I'm know you for madam. I don't yeah, know you whether you've got you. any weapons no, in your pockets not, or anything not, like yeah, that, mate. You, you, you would All know right? me if you'd do some background checks, wouldn't right. you? But the officers who know, who do know who, you, who, who? who spotted you, yeah. listen to me, mate, yeah. OK? Yeah, there's no point in being you. may well use, no, no, um, or may well know you use drugs, Yeah, I smoke cannabis, mate. All right. And when you start getting sexual, sharps you start searching shit. your... Um... Sharps. Is that sharps? Cannabis okay. is sharps now, all of a sudden. Don't start getting cocky I'm, with I'm me, sunshine, cocky. all right? I'm not getting cocky. Yes, you, you are, you fella. Are. You are, mate. Listen, when you're being searched, your legs are being searched, no, your socks are being searched. I'm not... I'm not in front of me, Anna. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you're tensing up, fella. I'm not tense. You calm down, fella. I'm calm. Look, loose, mate. I'm calm. With the wanted fellow refusing to be searched, other interceptors are on their way. Meanwhile, Jim is hoping to get round to the business of the warrant, out for this lad's arrest. People like you, mate. Slam a car in reverse because you see me walking. Well, you're a wanted male, mate. What do you expect? Wanted male? Did he even know? He should have turned up at the police station. If I'd have known, I'd have gone. Thankfully, fellow interceptors turn up to give Jim's eardrums a rest. You right, Jim? All right. Um, just need search, and he got incredibly twitchy when I went down by his socks. Um, and he was started tensing up, so I thought, well, we'll save rolling around. Sharp. Keep oh, holding his cuffs, mate. I'll get his shots on you then. After all that fuss, Jim's convinced there must be something in this fella's sock. But no. See? Nothing, mate. I've got full on me. I swear. No, because it's right, mate. I've got nothing on me. It turns out the warrant for his arrest was because he'd failed to appear in court for the offence of stealing a washing machine drum and a set of ladders. He pleaded guilty to the theft and had to pay £265 in fines and costs. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice cheeky little lock-up, really, to start the shift. It's always nice to um, start with a nice, simple lock-up. So, yeah, he's in the, he's in the bins, so to speak. Uh, it's a good little team effort all around. Still to come, fists are flying on a Friday night. He just said I've done nothing. And Jim weighs up a suspicious situation. Something on here, then I know there is. Nothing on me, mate. Illegal drugs, a stain on society and estimated to cost British taxpayers over £10 billion a year. So it's no surprise illegal substances are something the interceptors are keen to crack down on. Heroin and cocaine wrecks lives, it wrecks communities. Uh, people get addicted to it and people have to um, fund their addiction uh, by committing crime. It's just a vicious circle. But the interceptors know only too well those who dabble in drugs will go to great lengths to hide their activities from the cops. The interceptors suspect the blue Volkswagen ahead is being used by a couple of drug dealers to ferry around gear. Unbelievably, they try to dispose of the drugs by chucking them out of the car window. The streets are now well and truly caked in cannabis and the dopey driver heads into a dead end. The three on board are all swiftly nicked. In court, the driver and one of the passengers were convicted of possession of Class B drugs with intent to supply and received suspended prison sentences. They may have unsuccessfully tried to outwit the interceptors by dumping the drugs, but some criminals use sneakier ways to conceal their stash. It's just gone eight in crew, and veteran interceptor Jim Hunt is back out on the beat. A few hours into his shift, the in-car ANPR has alerted Jim to the car up ahead. Thought that rang a bell. Um, this vehicle here, um, activated air NPR, um, recent intel uh, from the uh, beginning of this month to say that the uh, the driver or the owner is um, picking up an individual who lives at a hostel and there's um, regular exchanges of packets between um, the individuals. The packets in question are reportedly Class A drugs and Jim wants to get it stopped. Roger, I'm going to go for a stop in it at some point, the two on board. Are there any um, units, local or force, nearby you could um, assist over? Jim wants backup as he knows that if there are drugs in the car, the two lads on board will try every trick in the book to hide the stash. So there's two people on board. So I've got a visor in the back of my head just in case they discard anything out of the vehicle. Drugs can be easily concealed and he is going towards the hostel, which is... Um, Quite interesting, really. Jim flashes the blues. 
I'll get alongside him. Pull into that side over there, mate. I want a quick word with you, fella. All right. The interceptor's eagle eyes are working overtime. That would have done. So why is he not stopping? The driver's failure to pull over first time has made Jim even more suspicious. All right, mate. Are you up to, buddy? Just in a routine check, mate, that's all. So where are you off to then, mate? McDonald's and food, I think. McDonald's and what? Mac on way. Jim doesn't want the lad to know he suspects there may be drugs in the car until another officer arrives to help with the search in case the fellas pull a fast one. Tell me why this is happening all the time as well, mate. I'll tell you a bit, mate. We're on a good time. But worryingly for Jim, the boys are getting a little agitated. Let's get, uh, I'll just run the details through first, mate, and then I'll explain why I'm here and why I'm speaking to you. Tonight, alright. Don't you need a, don't you need something to be stopped for, mate? That's the thing. Mate, listen. I know you I know you want the, the, the answers to your questions, okay? But I've got a process to go through and I'll explain in a short while, alright? So stop chirping on. I'll wait, I'll get to you as soon as I can, mate. You alright, fella? Just in the nick of time, the cavalry arrives. Hey buddy. And Jim wastes no time getting down to business. Right, fella. Um, whilst he was en route, we had information on the radio about this vehicle, about maybe you in particular, he may be in possession of drugs or the occupants of this vehicle may be in possession of drugs. Um, I'm going to search you and both of you and the car. If you want to step out, you have a word of my colleague over there. As Jim's colleague deals with the driver, Jim starts searching the passenger. This, your, this bag of yours, mate, yeah? Yeah, hey? yeah mum. And instantly spots something suspicious. What are all these small snap bags for, mate? Oh, we just got them in there, you know. I ain't got a little man bag. I mean, I've got a coat, but I don't carry small snap bags like this around. That's nothing to do with me, mate. What was in that bag? Oh, mate. Huh? I don't know. Jim knows little clear snap bags like this are often used to transport illegal drugs. This is what I find. I'm going to search you. I'm going to cuff you. Just make sure you don't run off because you see him a big lad. He could probably run quicker than me. There's something on you, isn't there? I know there is. Nothing, nothing on me, mate. You know what I mean? Just get pulled up every day of the week, man. In the lie detector on my nose, mate, and there's something you've got something in your pockets here, mate. Got nothing on me, mate. Nothing at all. Despite Jim's copper's nose working overtime, a search of both the passenger and the driver hasn't revealed any drugs. Arms up, bud. But he has made a couple of interesting discoveries in the motor. How come you got two phones? What's that? How come you got another phone? Stop him. Did you stop? Mm. This is all his cash? No. What did you do for a living? Nothing. Nothing? Doing nothing but having two mobile phones and a stash of cash is not a crime. However, it seems this bloke is a budding chef. I don't think he's going to be using this in the, the Great British Bake Off. Um, by any stretch of imagination, it's just here for one purpose only, and that's for drugs. You into your uh, cooking, are you? No, I'm into cooking. Aren't you? you got a set of scales on you for? I was just having it. You know, mate. There's something not right about you. You're very nervous, I'm fella. Nervous, mate. You know what I mean? Nothing, yeah. nothing at all. Except carrying scales and and Brilliant. lots of cash and. Uh, Small south south seal bags. Mm, tell me. Come round here, mate. <coughs> Sit yourself in the back of there. Hang on. As Jim begins a more thorough search of the motor, he discovers something else that could be used in the kitchen. You just never know with the individuals what they've got in the car. Not to say that that's uh, got any sinister purpose at the moment because it's a it's a craft blade, but I can't see any of the crafty type stuff in that in that glove box. So it's, it's worth a look at. He doesn't seem he doesn't seem right. He doesn't seem I've got a I've got um, my suspicions about him. He just seems very nervous, very pensive, um, and I can't find the drugs. I've got everything else but the drugs. Um, so I need to dig a little bit deeper. Unfortunately, Jim means literally. He's going to go into the police station for a drug search, um, and uh, we'll establish if he's got any drugs secreted anywhere that he shouldn't have.
Back at the station, both the driver and the passenger are taken inside, where they'll be treated to a strip search courtesy of Cheshire Police. But facing the prospect of the long arm of the law, the passenger's got a confession to make. Beef, down the trousers. Beef, what's beef? <clears throat> beak. Beak, what's beak? beak? Gold. Bingo. I like it when I'm proved right. Happy days. Um, that was down his, um, his trousers. He volunteered that when um, um, when we initially started searching him, he realised obviously we were going to search him. Um, that's the reason why he didn't pull over. Um, that's the reason why um, he wanted that little bit of time just to uh, give himself enough time to, to hide this where the sun don't shine. Um, so we've got the missing piece of jigsaw now. The white powder found in the bloke's pants turned out to be cocaine. In court, the passenger was convicted of possession of Class A drugs and was fined £470. The driver was released without charge. As for Jim, thanks to an ANPR hit, coupled with Jim's copper's nose, he's got another drug user off Cheshire streets. Nothing more that gives me a good bit of job satisfaction than getting uh, people like that off the roads. So uh, it looks like the information's bang on unless it's that car. So. Spot on, happy days. I'm glad I followed my gut instinct and um, we've got the, uh, the, the result that we need. We love Chester! Whee! Come the weekend, Chester's selection of pubs and clubs are a firm favourite for boys and girls looking for a good night out. Whilst most that descend on the town are well behaved, there's occasionally the odd idiot that doesn't know when to call it a night. Come down. Which is why, come Friday and Saturday night, the interceptors take to the streets in the big blue van. That's why you have bobbies in vans going around, making sure that we keep a lid on anything before it even uh, gets to the stage where it can kick off. It's Saturday night, approaching 2am. Interceptor Jim Hunt is out on the graveyard shift along with Sergeant John Marsden. Late night bars are starting to close, so the interceptors are poised to deal with any drunken disorder. But tonight, it seems everyone is behaving. Reasonably quiet. There's not much fighting, there's no raised voices, everybody seems quite happy. But the interceptors know trouble can erupt at any time, so they have to be ready to spring into action at the drop of a hat. And as they approach the entrance to one of the town's busiest bars, the Sarge spots something kicking off. Yep, we're going on up here. Left hand side. Good bitch, jump in! He just said I've done nothing! He just said I've done nothing! Wind it in, mate, alright? He just said, tell him I've done nothing. Luckily, the interceptors managed to break up the brawling before things got out of hand. What's going on? They just, he's been brought out for fight. And this lad's come out and then pair of them just fought for each other. Right, you just want rid of them? Yeah, and this one he's going as well because he's pushing and fighting with everyone. Him there. Down the stairs, mate, away, away. Down the stairs, away. Not cuffed, not cuffed, mate, just move him away. The door staff are saying these three lads were scrapping inside the bar. But that a fourth person, this bloke in the blue jumper, was also involved. He's a big lad, so the concerned Sarge wants him moved on before he causes any trouble. I'm just trying to walk past, trying to go for the fact he's gone boom, jawed me, he's stuck up for me, and he's jawed him in the face, gripped his buttons, and then all I've done is try to stand there and just try and even it out. But the guy who's kicked out, he kicked out the right guy. It looks like the Sarge has his work cut out, trying to get to the bottom of what's gone on. Fight inside. I've been an issue with a fight inside yeah. with the lads. Something about a drink being knocked, stuff like that. They've been told to leave, so they've yeah, left. Yeah. Started kicking off outside a little bit. Bouncers don't want to get involved, they just want them all moved on. All right. Right. You, can you can vouch for me though. Right, so you local lad, have yeah, been dealt with by the police before? Uh, not for someone like I'm running through the box. It sounds like a classic case of handbags at dawn. With no major injuries, the Sarge decides the best course of action is for the three lads to head off home. Right, you two on your way now, oh. fellas? Well, unless you want to pay for my fillings. However, the bloke in the blue jumper, thought to be involved in the earlier scuffle, is now refusing to leave. And the cops are concerned he's going to turn nasty. 
You've had a drink. You've had a drink. Best thing you can do is go now. Go on, we get arrested. Big hefty fine and a night in the cells. It's not worth it, is it? Come on, mate. I need to move the van anyway. Come on. Down the stairs. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like the lad wants to go home. Where are you going? Home. Well, go home then. We're not stopping you. And it seems this lad wants to go round two with the Sarge. Gay off. You don't understand what it is. Just, just stay to away. Deal stay away. With Heidi in the first, first instance. What the? You just keep your arms back. Down, down, down. Wrong move. Drunk and disorderly. Put your hands behind your back. With the Larry lad being aggressive towards the Sarge, the cops have no option, and he's down on the deck. Facing off the cops has earned this lad a night at the Nick. He wouldn't see, wouldn't listen, wouldn't go home. Uh, and he's ended up becoming a bit aggressive, swearing in public. And the whole point of our job in this role now is to nip that type of uh, offending in the bud now. Uh, and if we didn't arrest him, what else would have happened tonight? That's why he's in the back of a car. After a night in the cells, the fellow in the blue jumper was given a fixed penalty for being drunk and disorderly and had to pay a £90 fine. If he'd taken the Sarge's advice, he could have saved himself a lot of hassle and money. Drunk people are drunk people, and you can never reason with them. Um, they either want to go or they don't, and um, if they don't want to go, then you end up inevitably um, having to force them to go all rolling around on the floor. Still to come, a suspected drug driver. Open your mouth. Love it. It's not rocket science, is it? Is left with a bitter taste. Good news, it's tested positive for cocaine. Cocaine? Cocaine. Ah! Under arrest on suspicion of possession of a Class A drug cocaine. There are some people the interceptors deal with that no matter how many times they're caught doing something they shouldn't, they never learn their lesson. Hello, we meet again. Is this not the third time now? In fact, many of the criminals the interceptors collar have been arrested for the same offence at least once before. It's early afternoon in Crewe and PC Mike Jennings, known as Jeno, is off to the police drugstore to drop off some cannabis his colleague sees from a driver on the night shift just gone. But little does Jeno know the bag of drugs is going to throw up some strange coincidences today. Ex-supermarket man Jeno gave up a career selling groceries when he joined the force 13 years ago. Now the only turnip he's interested in are those of the criminal variety. Hotel Tango 81. Change you to garage and do us another check, please, on the move on West Street. The in-car ANPR camera has just alerted Jeno to a vehicle of interest. The black Fiesta um, up ahead, it's got intelligence on it. I've seen his name today somewhere. And the pennies dropped. The, these drugs that someone's been dealing with overnight uh, are related to this car that we're following now. That's fate. I thought the name rings a bell. My memory's normally quite terrible, so for me to remember that, it must be important. He might have some more. That's the plan. We just has to eat, mate, please, for last night. Um, I think it was um, stopped and some drugs were recovered last night. Just um, have a look for us. Roger. Hey right, mate, just turn night. your engine off for us, buddy. No, stop last night again. Did you? Yeah. Have you got anything on you now that I need to know about? Don't worry about it. Definitely. Stupid. I'm well, I'm well, I stopped last night. Okay. And I'm gonna stop it again. You're driving a vehicle on a road. You're on the risk of being stopped all the time. All right. You're not taking any cannabis since. Oh, don't worry. Jump in the back, buddy. Hello. 
Jeno's concerned that because the bloke failed a roadside drugs test last night... There's nothing in your pockets at all? Wallet, wallet in the car. Is it in the car? All right, jump in. He could still be over the legal limit. Right. So, you tested positive last night for cannabis, did you? Again. Pardon? This is the last time we can stop you. No. That's why I'm told. We can stop you as many times as you want. If you're driving a car, if you're driving a car on the road, we've got power to stop you. What time was this then? What time did you get stopped driving? One o'clock. One o'clock. Take anything else other than cannabis. You don't take cocaine? Uh, no. Uh, Ever? I've actually had cocaine before, but... When was the last time? Last party, don't we? Pardon? The last party. When was that? I was like, couldn't have to The lads got the hump for being stopped twice in two days on suspicion of drug driving. But admitting he uses both cannabis and cocaine can only lead Jenner to one conclusion. So... You're a driver on a road, and or we've already established you take cocaine and cannabis, and you think we're targeting you unlawfully. I'm not saying doing it, but yeah, you know I mean once, yeah, not twice in a day. It's just the roadside drug swipe will test for both cannabis and cocaine. Right, swill your mouth around your tongue, between your teeth and your lips. Ha! Ah. Swill your tongue. Between your teeth and your lips. That's not it. Between your teeth and your lips. Right? Swill your tongue between your teeth and your lips. Like this. It's dead easy. For someone that's giving his second saliva sample in the space of 12 hours, the driver still hasn't got the hang of it. Open your mouth. It's not rocket science, is it? I'm sure you got better things to do than Well, no. That's what I mean. Because we should be targeting you, because you've been arrested how many times? Twice for drug driving recently? Yeah? Last night you had some cannabis. Cannabis which I've got here, because I was taken to the drug safe as you drive past me. How ironic's that? <laughs> you couldn't write that, could you? You couldn't write that. All that's left now is for the drugs wipe to do its thing. Now, he has been coming up positive for cannabis in the past, but there is a faint line there for cocaine. He's going to have to be arrested. And we'll go to um, custody, and it'll be the third time he goes. It's going to be done happy. What do you think this says? Bad, good news. Good news? It's tested positive for cocaine. Cocaine? Cocaine. What? There's a faint line there for cocaine. Try me another, because that's a lie. I can't try you another. Yeah, I've got to go with what I said. Well, you said you take cocaine yeah, at the last party. Yeah, Yeah, because yesterday when we tried it, there wasn't nothing there. You can ask the, ask the guy, and I'm going to sleep to you well, afterwards. Well, you might have taken some since. How do I know? What, on Sunday night? Yeah, why not? I'm not stupid. Why would I do it Sunday night? You're not, you say you're not stupid, but this is the oh, third time you've been arrested, so... You can't find enough weed, so you can get some gold cake. Well, I've not made I it up. That's right. your they're saliva. Wrong. They're, wrong. they're not right, I'm telling you that's, straight, they're wrong. That's your saliva, not mine. Well, so... You can try again, because that's right, right. At the moment, you're under arrest for oh. driving over the prescribed limit. That's a lie. That is a... Oh. All right. The lads will now be taken to the Nick, where we'll have a blood sample taken to determine whether or not he's over the legal limit. The bloods came back and proved he wasn't drug driving this time. However, it turns out he'd refused to give a sample of blood the previous night, and in court he was found guilty of failure to provide and possession of cannabis. He was banned from driving for 24 months and fined £325. I suppose he's at that age where he's 18 and he thinks he knows best, so hopefully second time in 12 hours arrested might change his mind and the long walk home from custody. So, fingers crossed. Come on, mate. Six innocent lives lost and a deception that ripped a family apart. Five years on, we revisit the aftermath of the Philpot fire, brand new next. Whilst on Spike, there's no outrunning the all new traffic cops. They're under attack, and they're next.
in pursuit. Vehicle failed to stop. And out in force. This is police interceptors. Stay there or you get gassed. Following every move of Cheshire's elite crime fighting units. Hey there! We put you in the front seat with their pursuit drivers. Left, left, left on the five, three, four. On the hunt with their dog units. All right, mate, all right, mate. Ringside as they go toe to toe with the bad guys. Get your legs. Put your hand behind your back. Brace those hard, everybody. Buckle up. Set tasers to stun and stand by to intercept. Get your hands up now. Another day at the office. Coming up. A raid on a drug dealer. What's the go? Dealer bags, that's ready for sale. An aggressive suspect. Why are you pulling simple. on that, lad? Why are here. you pulling on that? Gets a face full of pepper spray. Don't you push your face at me. <laughs> Do not push your face at me. And a high speed pursuit ends in a smash. <laughs> Cheshire police raid up to a dozen properties each week, looking for drugs, weapons, and wanted suspects. Hello? Hi, mate. Hey there! Police for taser! The people who look after the method of entry, putting in doors in layman's terms, are the interceptors. Today, Sergeant Sean Doolan is the MOE main man, and he's packing all the necessary tools for the job. Do you want the go back? As long as it's a hand, mate, yeah. Take it out with us. The interceptors are part of a team tasked with taking down a local dealer and hopefully finding his stash. Sean's job is to get into the house as quickly as possible. The warrant taking place in Blaken, uh, misuse of drugs warrant, just making our way to the address now. We're just going to force entry into the address. We've got the uh, enforcer with us. Uh, it's literally going to be straight up to the front door. I'm just going to take the front door off straight away. Sean is a big fan of Mrs Brown's boys, but he's in no mood for joking around this morning. The main target of the raid is a convicted dealer who's been let out of jail on licence. It seems he's back in business, and this time the interceptors want to shut him down for good. He's got uh, lots of previous. Uh, he's currently on bail for drugs offences. And it's believed, uh, from what we know, that he's still dealing uh, in cannabis. Obviously, he's on bail for that offence as well, which sort of heightens the offence a little bit. Uh, so we're going to try and uh, see if we can get him for that offence, get him back into custody, put him back before the courts and try and get them remanded for that offence. The suspect clearly knows the risks. So this raid needs to be quick and slick, with no time for anyone in the house to dispose of any drugs before the police get to them. The interceptors head to the front door, while their colleagues cover all the available exits. Now it's time for the big red key. Police! 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 Where's Jordan? There are three people in the bedrooms upstairs, and the main target is downstairs dozing on the living room couch. Hey there, Toby. What's it in? What's the cure? Just for safety, the cuffs, all right? Yeah, yeah. I'll get downstairs. I've got you. No, no, I'll stay here. Your best side by side, because if I go in front, you're going to lose your balance and fall over. All the people in the house are rounded up. But the target of the raid isn't plain ball. Now the search teams get to work as the method of entry team pack away their door knocking kit. Yeah, okay. Uh, one hit. It's the uh, best alarm call in the world. There's no snooze with that one. Uh, in, 
occupants secured in the living room, three bedrooms upstairs. Uh, I think before they had a chance to realise what had gone on, so yeah, good job. PC Gavin is searching one of the bedrooms and he's found something. About 1,200 quid. Having 1,200 quid in cash isn't illegal, but what's been found in the bedroom next door certainly is. Given the amount of what looks like marijuana and how it's packaged, there's enough to charge the suspect with dealing, also known as peewits or possession with intent to supply. Peewits? Yes. Class B? Yeah. Cannabis, yeah. yeah. You're under arrest on suspicion of being in possession of a Class B controlled drug with intent to supply it, namely cannabis. With the police still searching his belongings, the man is taken off to the neck in his dressing gown. It seems there's enough evidence to bring his dealing days to an end. Cannabis bush, that is, uh, which is a Class B drug. Um, and there's further, and that's what our, our classes, kind of like dealer bags, and that's, that's, that's ready for people to basically sell. So uh, drug users would buy that and pay like 10, 20 pounds for a bag of that. And like with most drug dealing, find things like scales. Obviously you're looking at a significant quantity of cash there, which, you know, most people don't keep in their house really. Yeah. Keep mine in the bank. Detective Sergeant Nick Henderson has been in charge of today's operation and pleased it's gone to plan. What we describe as a successful drugs warrant, Jordan Hasselden has been well known to us. He's on bail three times for uh, periods, class, class B cannabis. And uh, we've got there today and there's been a large amount of cannabis bush itself. Successful day, we'll go to do now and start the, uh, start the interview phase. The hard work begins now. The man was later convicted of dealing cannabis. Because he was already out on licence, he was put behind bars for three years. The £1,200 was seized by the police. No further action was taken against the other three people in the house. Still to come, Jim hunts down a speeding driver... Come here. ..who's got something to hide. Result. Small hydroponic setup. A fleeing motor puts lives at risk. And a surprise find at the roadside. Mate, I swear to you, I don't even know what that is, mate. The interceptors are experienced, eager and equipped with the latest crime-fighting kit. They also sit behind the wheel of some pretty powerful cars. I really enjoyed driving the police cars around. That was one of the reasons why I joined the cops, was to drive big, fast cars really fast. This is one of our better cars. This one will do in excess of 160 miles an hour. So it's, it's a very, very quick car. Uh, not much gets away from us in this. Midnight in Macclesfield and Jim Hunt is on the tail of a driver who's trying to get away from him. I've just seen this vehicle travel at speed. And it's turned off a roundabout and uh, as soon as he's seen us, he's um, booted it down the road. We'll see what he's got to say and why he's got that much lead in his boot. Jim loves his high-spec crime car almost as much as the first motor he owned, a Ford Escort XR3i. And tonight, he's up against a Vauxhall Aguila. It's automotive men against boys. Hello. Come here, mate. Come here. No, I'm not getting off, mate. No, 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 you're not getting off, mate. Is this your car? Oh, it's my missus' car. OK. How come you're going so fast around the, on the street? I was just getting back, mate, for my kids. You had a drink? No, I don't drink. OK. Come over here, then, mate. Hey, yeah. Come out your way, pocket. No, mate. sorry, I was just pulling my pants up, mate. The driver claims he's come home to see his kids, but it's just gone midnight and most children are tucked up in bed. Jim smells a rat. OK, I'm detaining you for the purposes of search at the moment because I've yeah, fallen no, no, something me. on you. No, What's your no. name, fella? Kenny Barlow. Ken Barlow, good Northwest name. You seem a big fella, mate, so I don't particularly want to yeah, get into a rock with you. Honestly, mate, I'm sweet. Can I just make sure my missus is all right, mate? She's stood down the window. Help. If she stood down the window, she's all right, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. She's not in any bother. Jim gives the punter a pat down and finds a packet in his back pocket. Do you use drugs at all, mate? Yeah, a little, What's bit, that? A little bit of cocaine, mate. Okay, you're under arrest and suspicion of a possession of a Class A drug. Oh, yeah. Jump in the car, fella. I found a wrap of white powder, which 
I believe to be cocaine. I'll then um, do what's called an evidential identification test and that'll determine what kind of drug it is back at the police station. He's obviously seen us at the roundabout, uh, popped us with a yeah, uh, Roman Mark police car and absolutely floored it to try and get away. But unfortunately, um, a BMW 330 against a little uh, Vauxhall Agreda ain't no uh, particularly cut it, is it really? Along with the wrap in the man's pocket, Jim's discovered a couple more in the car. I found another two wraps, but what I believe to be cocaine. So he now wants to search the house. He hasn't gone into the address and come back out, which will give us the power under section 32 to do a search. So what we're going to have to do now is uh, speak to the duty inspector to give us authorization to do what's called a section 18.5 search. By the time the cavalry arrives, the driver has fessed up to something else. I must confirm he's got a provisional license. Hansie's has got no insurance. Uh, we've got the cocaine. So um, not a bad little stop, really, by all accounts. And there's more bad news for the lad. Jim's just got the green light to search the house. We've been given authority now by the, um, the duty um, inspector to go and search the property. Um, so we'll go inside and um, see what's in there as well, which uh, will uh, make his day even worse. And it doesn't take Jim long to achieve his goal. We've got a tub there with um, loose leaf tobacco. And it looks like a bit of herbal bush inside a tin containing some um, cannabis bush. Upstairs, there are signs of something much bigger. Right, so you can hear the humming in here. It's quite hot in here. And this locker, I tend to suspect, it's probably got what we're looking for. There we go. Result, small hydroponic setup in a cabinet. Uh, they go on the assumption it's going to be about a, a grand a plant for uh, a yield. And it looks like we've got three plants there, so... That's three grand's worth of cannabis. Not a bad result off just um, a little speed in motorist. Excellent. It's pretty clear that this is cannabis, but Jim can't be so sure about the white powder he found earlier. We need to uh, prove what it is before we take the case forward. So they'll be tested at the police station. The cannabis will be recovered and booked in at Macclesfield Police Station and it'll be taken to Middlewich. Lovely, let's get going. While the driver gets booked in, Jim runs a few tests on the powder he found on the lad and in the car. We'll start off with a cocaine test. This is the one that was in his pocket originally. So we're going to open it now and uh, see what we've got inside. OK, so what we've got here is a compressed powder. You can get some of the powder. You don't need much at all, really. Um, and we drop it into this buffer solution here. Now all we need to do is fill this um, window full of solution. And you can see the, um, the solution being soaked up into the paper and it, there's one solid line coming up here now. That's called the control line. The, uh, the substance we've taken off of me is definitely cocaine. The driver was later convicted of the production of cannabis, possession of cocaine and cannabis, and driving with no licence or insurance. He was banned from driving for a year and fined £250. He was also ordered to undertake 15 days of rehabilitation activity and 60 hours of community service. We do get a bit of job satisfaction out of um, finding some drugs like that and uh, it proves my instinct's still correct. And, uh, you know, but all in all, it's a good job. High-speed pursuits are part and parcel of being an interceptor, but they're not something our boys in blue take lightly. Pursuit-qualified drivers are tested every two years to make sure their skills are up to scratch. And even though catching the bad guys is important, safety is the number one priority. We're not there to put people in danger, or the road users in danger, pedestrians in danger. That's not what it's about. We're there to try and stop those people at that time from doing what they're doing. And if we can't do it safely and we can't do it effectively, then we won't do it because generally they will come again. And that's, that's just how it is. It's just a big game. It's the early hours and the interceptors are after a Vauxhall Astra, which raced away from them after they tried to have a chat with its occupants. Speed at the minute is 70, 70, 70. 
The car had been parked in a notorious drug-taking spot and the driver had dumped a bag out of the window before making off. Whatever he may or may not have done wrong, he's in no mood to stop for the cops. Speed now is uh, 6-0. Thankfully, the rural roads are pretty clear, but the Astra is heading towards a built-up area. OK, Joe, we're heading... Taking blind corners on the wrong side of the road there could be catastrophic. After a few near misses, the driver finally loses it. He loses it on the corner, clips the curb and spins out onto the verge, incredibly missing all of the trees on the roadside before getting back onto the tarmac. Now doing 70 in a 40 mile an hour zone, the speeding motor narrowly misses a car coming in the other direction. The driver's now heading into Macclesfield and the risks are getting bigger. This pursuit needs to end soon. The Astra's approaching a roundabout at high speed, but which way will the runaway go next? And it wasn't the direction they expected, straight ahead into a wall. The front seat passenger has legged it, but the officers quickly move in to get the driver who's able to walk from the wreckage. It's the last drive he'll be taking for quite a while. The driver was taken to hospital before going to the Nick. He was then arrested for failing to stop, dangerous driving, driving with no license or insurance and possession of cannabis with intent to supply. The inquiries are ongoing. The front seat passenger was never found. It's the back end of Saturday night. And whilst the good folk of Cheshire can drift peacefully off to sleep, the interceptors need to keep a sharp eye out for trouble. Tim Biffel and Richard Fothergill are tailing an Audi potentially connected to a car theft. Not quite sure how it's been linked or how it's been involved, but uh, possibility cited with a stolen vehicle, so we'll, we'll give it a check. Tim's an all-action hero who once pulled two men from a burning car. But nobody's perfect. He's also a Man United fan. Let's go. How many look on it? I think it's just one, mate, as he went past us. Ready to go? Yep. They light up the Audi and the driver pulls over without fuss. Hey, buddy, is your engine off? All right. Jump out here for us, have a quick chat with you. So where are you off to now then? Home. Off home. Took some girl out for a date, then to the pictures. You been for a date? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to the pictures. Pleasantries out of the way, it's down to business. Yeah. Vehicle sighted in connection with a stolen BMW. Okay, well, so my registration, well, your registration, yeah, with this vehicle, yeah. Well, so I don't it, know where you've it, got it, it could be something completely innocent, like you've been driving on the road, you've been well, near to possibly a stolen is, vehicle, and someone is. just called in and reported it to us, okay, which right. is one of the reasons why you've been stopped, okay? Well, so right, yeah, yeah. we'll get some details from you. Well, but as the driver's escorted to the Beamer, word comes through that the Audi's linked to a lot more than a stolen motor. So there's reports of your vehicle also being sighted on other occasions in around Chester, classed as being suspicious. So what's going to happen is, mate, we're going to be searching yourself and the vehicle in the Section 23 of the Mississippi Drugs Act, OK, to make sure there's nothing on yourself and the vehicle. With additional markers on the car, the boys have more than enough grounds for an in-depth search. Just one question, mate, we need to know about. Anything in your pockets at the moment you shouldn't have or anything in the car that shouldn't be in there? James, Nothing, no. Just give a second, here, mate. I'll, I'll give a quick you search in the mate. car. Don't empty your pockets yourself, no offence. Mm -hmm. OK. Lovely. Definitely nothing you'd want. One million percent, mate. Stuff it all. There's a little bit of money and a bit of change. A quick frisk by Richard reveals nothing untoward, and the driver seems totally relaxed. How much money's here, bud? Yeah, it's about 100 quid. Not a lot. No, not more <laughs> <laughs> I was on a date one night, so I had to take a little bit out. Oh, it is. 
Meanwhile, Tim's search turns up nothing more suspicious than a spare wheel. Car's OK, mate. I'm quite happy, too fair. Any cash on or anything like that? Or? Not a massive amount. Just about 100 quid. Uh, There's a bag of sweets in the front step, so he could have gone to the pictures to be A short film quiz should confirm that. What have you been to watch? Well, we've been to watch Brotherhood. What happened? Spoiler alert, if you've not seen Brotherhood, cover your ears now. <laughs> right, the back guy ended up doing in all the other guys, like, in the end, like, and his mum got chucked off the balcony and... Oh, you've ruined it, I was going to watch that. That's a cracking review, that is. This looks like a film fan with nothing to hide. Happy. All sorted, pal, OK? Nice one, man. Um, you've got some pound coins under your seat, just so you know, in case you're looking for a couple oh, of, cheers, a couple of pound right. coins. Nice All right, mate. Uh, thanks for your time. Right. Obviously, um, drive safe. Hold up. Tim's clocked something. And it's not popcorn. Hang on, mate. Give your hand a sec. Give your hand. Whoa, it's just fag pots. What's that? What's your other hand? What's that? Hands out, mate. I swear to you, I don't even know what that is. What's your other hand? Hands out. What? Mate, I swear to you, I don't even know what that is, mate. I've just seen that hanging out of your pocket here. I don't know what... Right. That, in my opinion, it's class A drugs at the moment. You play this and listen to me. You're under arrest, OK, on suspicion. Possession of control. Seems he had a sneaky wrap in his pocket. It's obviously from a night out from where we okay. jeans from ages ago. No worries, mate. Nice. Unfortunately, it's still an offence to have, isn't yeah, it? Sorry, okay. I it. Okay, pal. Do the favour, come to the back of the car for us, please, Jay. God. The driver passes the roadside drug wipe, but he's still been caught in possession. Keep it legged out for me, mate, a bit further. I could see the top end of the plastic wrapper sticking out of the little pocket in his jeans. Basically, it looks like the usual thing that's they used to store cocaine in. I've been glad it wasn't and it's just been in the pocket. But, but, yeah, they've not realised. I understand that, but obviously, I've got to deal with it, haven't I? I yes, yeah, you understand yeah, that? I understand that. What are you? Believe it. After a thorough search of the driver's Audi by the dog unit and an even more thorough search of his person back at the Nick, no further drugs were discovered. With no evidence to link him with car theft, he was later released with a caution for possession of Class A drugs. Coming up, the interceptors deal with some gobby suspects. I'm not answering shit, so what's wrong with you? Nothing. I haven't got to answer anything. Well, no, we said you did. Not once, but twice. If you don't tell mm. me, I'm telling you. Don't speak to my wife if you piece of shit. <laughs> He just said I've done nothing. With assaults on police officers on the increase... Get your arms out! Get your arms out now! The interceptors have a variety of tools at their disposal... Get your hands behind your back. ...to help keep them safe from potential attackers. As standard, we all wear uh, stab-proof vests. We carry um, casco batons, captor spray, which is... some people might refer to it as, like, a pepper spray. And if a suspect is kicking off, one quick blast of pepper spray is all that's needed to take him down. We're not going to take stay back, stay back, stay back, stay back, stay back, stay back. It's Thursday evening and interceptor Mike Jenno Jennings is behind a car which is being driven in a suspicious manner. This is car in front. Gave me a little bit of a... Uh, Inkling when I went past it, it just parked up randomly, turned its lights off, saw us, lights went on, and drove off again instantly. Football lover Geno is a big Liverpool fan, and tonight his strike rate has been more Andy Carroll than Ian Rush. My guess is they're going to be Mr and Mrs Legitimate, given my luck tonight. We'll risk it for a chocolate biscuit, eh? Geno rolls the dice and lights up the motor, and the driver hits the brakes and pulls slowly to a stop. As Geno's on his own, he needs to be sure it's definitely staying put before he gets out. I thought you were going to drive off then. No, no, it's pulling over, doesn't it? Open your door, handbrake on. The car's rolling off. Any reason you were pulled up at the side of the road just up there? The curb, mate. Oh, right, OK. What have you pulled me for? Because I can stop any vehicle driving on the road. No, I don't. You do? No, I don't. Under section 163 of the road traffic act, I've got a power to stop any vehicle on the road to check the documents, which is what I'm doing now. Okay. Yeah? So that sounds good, doesn't it? I'm going to. Okay, jump out. The lad's giving Jenna a bit of lip, but back chatting the cops isn't a crime. Though Jenna thinks this chap is guilty of something. 
Taking any drugs, your eyes look a bit spaced out. I think they do. They do. Do you take drugs at all? Really? The driver's denying taking drugs, but Jeno has a quick way of finding out if he's telling the truth. I'm just going to do a quick drug test. Come and take a seat in my car while we go through that. Stick your tongue out. Open your mouth. Stick your tongue out. Stick your tongue out. Hey, I'm glad. You can do it or what? Well, if you stick your tongue out, yeah. This isn't. That's it. That's better. Okay, thank you. The reluctant liquor isn't happy with Jeno's wiping technique. The lippy lad now has an eight minute wait until the results come through. How come you pulled up there to use the phone? My bird rang me, mate. What do you want me to do? Use it while I'm on the road? No, I'm not saying you've done anything. I asked you why you pulled over. So I'd have told you to use my phone. OK. No need to get stressed out, is there? Yeah, because you're mocking, man. What's the need for all this? I'm not answering shit, so mm. what's up with you? Nothing. I haven't got to answer anything. That well, you no, I said you did. You could have. You, you could have just said, well, I'm not answering. Well, there you go. Instead of like, so what, you what, what you did now, yeah. what do you think this test will say? For the first time, there's no comeback from Billy Batchat. It's tested positive for cocaine. Silence for the second time. So at the moment, you're under arrest for drug driving. It was just a stop check, really. He'd stopped without his lights on, so it wasn't as if we disturbed him doing something. So we got a positive drugs wipe. So all in all, nice little stop check. Let's hope we find something in the car. Jeno's colleagues arrive to search the motor. There aren't any drugs, but they do unearth a cannabis grinder and an unusually shaped wrap of cling film. Meanwhile, the driver has found his tongue again and wants to make a phone call, which he's not allowed to do as he's under arrest. I need to ring my dad. You don't. How don't I? Because he's from custody. You don't need to ring him, do you? What are you doing, mate? You're pulling it across my neck. What across my neck? Do you want these on the back again? No, I'm just saying. Oh. The gobby lad isn't happy about being nicked and decides to vent his spleen at Geno's colleague, Al Robinson. What do you mean, that? Why are you pulling simple. on that lad? Pull and coffee to the rear. Why are you pulling on that? Pull and coffee to the rear. Stop pulling that lad. Pull and coffee to the rear. Don't you push your face at me. You just do not push your face at me. I haven't done anything. Right, Mate. stop kicking off. Go out the car. Go Wait, out the I car. Get out the car. All right, I've got we need to handcuff you. I need to get out then. Let me get out. Out, baby eyes and everything. Hey, babe, please. Do not spit. Hey, baby eyes. Get your hand down. Hey, baby eyes. Please, baby eyes. Yeah, baby eyes. The pepper sprays kicked in on the suspect and on Jeno. You alright, Al? Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to try and do anything. I just wanted to make my dad. Right. If you wipe it and make it worse, mate, trust me, I've got it all in my face too. Well, it's alright. Straight in the eyes. Well, we're supposed to spray it in the eyes. It's not going to work on your nose, is it? Please. Now he's dropped the attitude and is finally playing ball. The interceptors do their bit to help ease the lad's pain. Turn around. Get that wind in your face. He's been desperately trying to make a phone call whilst we've been readjusting the handcuffs for transportation. Um, and we got one handcuff out, and then he's tensed up, refused to move his arm, refused to be handcuffed. Um, so I've made a move across the car to sort of push him out and had all his hand where he's sort of lunged his head towards me, um, and Al's gassed him and me, um, which has been quite effective, if I'm honest. It's the most intense, burning sensation in your eyes, you know, and it's all over something so stupid. You can't make a phone call, he's under arrest. The teary-eyed suspect is taken back to the Nick to be given a bit more TLC. And the gobby behaviour, which got him into trouble in the first place, has been completely blown away, unlike the pepper spray. That's how I'm talking about. There's only so much that you can get away with. And if you're going to, you know, lunge towards me or a colleague or raise your fists, you know, not be compliant, then you, you will get reasonable force used against you, which is what he had. The man later appeared in court and did plead guilty to resisting arrest. Unable to take a blood sample, no action was taken over the possible drug driving. Do not push your face at me. It's been a good night for Jeno, despite getting a face full of pepper spray. It shows... The kit works, gives us faith in having the equipment, even though my face is really burning. <laughs> it's just another day in paradise. 
It's the wee small hours of the morning, but there's no sleeping on the job for interceptor Jim Hunt. He's hard at work in the crime car, despite feeling a bit under the weather. Bit of man flu tonight, bit of man flu, but um, put that to one side really and um, let's go and try and find something. Jim's hunt for wrong'uns has taken him to the outskirts of Wilmslow, where he once again spots a car speeding into a housing estate. The car's a decent distance away from Jim and he has to work hard to catch up. Once he has the motor in his sights, Jim lights it up. And it doesn't stop. But Jim's in luck as it heads into a cul-de-sac. The vehicle that's uh, at speed. Getting over the speed dumps like they weren't there. With the car parked up in a driveway, Jim wants to find out why the driver chose to take such a bumpy ride. Right, fella. Oh, Where have you been tonight, mate? Just a mate's house. Been in mate's house, okay. Have you anything to drink at all tonight, mate? Yeah, I had two pints for you. Have you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right, let's come over here then, matey. Do you live here, do you? Yeah. yeah. Is your parents' house? No, it's mine. Your house, okay. As the man's admitted to drinking, he's going to be breathalyzed. But first, Jim has to deal with a woman who's come out of one of the houses. <laughs> okay, he's just doing a quick breath test, okay? Just bear with us. Don't worry about it, he's fine. Given that it's nearly four in the morning, Jim suspects that the man has had more than just two pints, and there's only one way to find out. Because you're driving a vehicle on the road and suspects you've had an alcoholic drink, I therefore require you to... Yeah, okay, but... I therefore require you... I know, I know the rig and I can't. require you to take a breath. Yeah, yeah. Specimen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've had a, I, I had a drink in the last two minutes, like. Yeah, no drink in the last two minutes. Well, yeah, I just I finished my pint, like, literally just as drunk guy. That's fine. We can wait then, can't we, mate? Well, yeah. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes actually, mate. The driver said he's just had a drink, and the regulation is that you can't be breathalysed for at least twenty minutes after imbibing alcohol. Jim suspects he's playing for time, but right now the woman is also causing a problem. Hey, shut that door now. That's my husband. Yeah, I know it's your husband and he's in my car, OK? So if you open the door and he wanted to, he could up foot it out the window, couldn't he? If you go back inside, don't touch, don't touch the door right again. Now? Yeah, don't touch the door again, please, love, OK? The woman's backed off, but her other half isn't happy about it. The only thing that pissed me off is he speaks to my wife like shit. Don't speak to my wife like a piece of shit. I'm not, mate, but I've told her not to open the door. I'm telling you. You don't tell mm. me, I'm telling you. Don't speak to my wife like a piece of shit. Do you me? Mate, when she opens the door to the police car, what do, you tell, what do you expect me to say? Listen, she doesn't know about all the law and that. Don't speak to my wife okay. like a piece of shit. That's all I'm saying to you. I'm not speaking to her like a piece of shit. It was. Mate. You were speaking down to her. I wouldn't speak to her like that, so don't you speak to her like that. She's my wife. Jim brings the heated conversation to a halt by bringing out his breathalyzer. Right, so lean forward, form a complete cell end of the tube and one long card blow until the tide to stop, mate, okay? Blow. Lovely. Right. Test has shown you've blown 83, mate. The legal limit's 35. You're under arrest and suspicion of driving a motor vehicle whilst over the prescribed limit of uh, alcohol. He was quick for a reason around the estate. He was quick because he was drunk and he wanted to get away from us. He tried to play the old card, I've just had a drink, but I was prepared to play his game, uh, wait the uh, required amount of time and he's, uh, he's blown 83, so it's a good little result, a drink driver off the road. The driver's nearly two and a half times over the limit. And back at the Nick seems determined to do everything he can to delay doing a second breath test, as well as giving Jim some verbals. Not only are you a shit driver, you don't understand the word of the Queen, you couldn't run the length of yourself by the look of you. You carry on, fella. You carry on, mate. Well, it makes you feel better. I'll be there all night. I know what. I know what. 83. Have you got any illnesses? Yeah, I've, I've got every illness going. What have you got? Whatever ailments he may have. Asthmatic, diabetic. The gobby fella does have a talent for time wasting. I've got all sorts. All manner of good. They will have to keep talking for several more hours if he's going to get all the alcohol out of his system. When was that time you saw a doctor? I'm not too sure. Got memory loss as well. 
take any medication for anything? Uh, I take medication for my diabetes, I take medication for my paranoia, I take medication for my uh, schizophrenia, I take medication for uh, numerous things to take medication for, but I forget because I've got Alzheimer's too. Have you um, got asthma? Yeah. No, that's one of the things that skipped. I've not got that, no. I've got everything but it. Maybe Chatterbox does indeed have memory loss. As just a few seconds ago, he said he did have asthma. Have you got any illnesses? Yeah, I've got, I've got every illness going. What have you got? Um, asthmatic. Bad attitude combined with time wasting makes this chap a particularly tricky customer. And there's more to come. Have you ever tried to harm yourself? Yeah. What have you done? I tried hanging myself with a Lego kit. Lego kit? Yeah, I built a Lego tower and tried hanging myself off it. It was mint. Just in it. YouTube phenomenon. When did you do that? Look it up on YouTube, you'll see it. Mega. Mega. Yeah. Mega, uh, mega blocks. Is there anything else you want to tell me about your health or your welfare whilst you're here? I'm, yeah, I'm quite peckish. Got a bit of dry mouth. Our motor mouth has some questions of his own. So what, what is my actually arrest charge suspected drink driving? Well, it's a suspicion to a charge. Well, so why did he say drink driving? Because it's given that everything's a suspicion of something. Well, it's not a given, is that? This is just uh, It's not a given, is it? If it was a given, you wouldn't have to sit in it and go through the frigmore, would you? So it's not a given, is it? It's suspicion. No, you just crack on with your you just crack on with your identity. Do you want to sign it somewhere? Yeah. You're, you're boring. There you go. Oh. Finally, all the paperwork is done. No thanks to Matey Boy. He finally does a second breath test. More than an hour after he was first tested at the roadside, due to his delaying tactics. But thankfully, the time wasting has all been in vain. 83, 81. It's the result Jim wanted, and finally he can bid farewell to his chatty companion. His behaviour and his attitude really stinks, and it's even more satisfying really when they're like that. And you get a, what a high reading. It's a satisfying day at the office, and it makes it all worthwhile. The realisation of what's going to come uh, to him now will, uh, will start to sink in. The man later pleaded guilty to drink driving and was fined £525, including costs, and banned from driving for 20 months. Jim's shown the patience of a saint and it's paid off for him. You can quite easily get into a, a, a confrontation with that person and uh, distract yourself from what you're there to do, and that is to get that breath sample to secure that conviction. You're just going to bite your lip, uh, let it all wash over you, and, um, and, and think of the end goal. And ultimately, um, that, that's been achieved today. We've got the uh, result. Still to come, a hunt for a suspected armed robber. I'm sorry, you could have seen us and disappeared already. Takes the interceptors up ladders. Yeah, mate. And round the houses. It's a bit of a random place to have a kitchen knife. We'll have that. It's a chilly morning in Cheshire and interceptors Tom Spowage and Tim Powell are hunting down a man wanted on a number of charges. We've been tasked with looking for a wanted male. Um, we've got some intelligence that he's uh, sleeping in a row of houses in the Middlewich area. He's currently wanted for two armed robberies with a knife, a burglary dwelling and assault. And hopefully we can get hold of the, uh, hold of the lad before he commits any more offences. 14-year veteran Tim supports Port Vale, and despite that, is still a big football fan. While his colleague Tom, nicknamed Sponge, is more of a cricket lover. And the info they've been given about where the man is hiding has them both stumped. Intel suggests it's house with a white door, but unfortunately, uh, they've most, all got, most, white most doors. got white doors. They've been joined by a colleague who often works undercover so we can't reveal his identity. Now it's time to pick a white door. Tim checks the front, while Tom covers the rear of the house. It looks to be a tailor-made hideout, empty with a missing rear window. The man they're after is known to be violent and believed to be armed with a knife. Even with two colleagues outside, 
Tom's taking no chances and keeps his hand on his pepper spray. Tim's watching the front. There's five houses, all five have got white doors. And keeping control informed about what's going on. Gained access, it's insecure at the rear. There's a window missing, so we're just searching that in a minute. Tom has been joined by his colleague to give the house a proper once-over. There's definitely no one in, but it looks like it's been used recently. Chances are he's been sleeping in this property here, um, easy access. But chances are he could have seen us and disappeared already. But uh, we'll keep looking. This isn't the only place the suspect's been spotted. The team heads to another address he's been linked with. Tom's keen to catch the man today before the situation escalates. He's obviously in need of money, so that's why he's committing these armed robberies at the uh, local news agents. Uh, at some point, he, he may go a bit further and start using the knife rather than just threatening with it. So he's somebody that uh, we consider dangerous. You know, we've both got taser and the other patrol's got a taser. At the next place, it's the same drill. Except this time, Tom will try the front door. Corner one. There aren't any open windows to get in through, and once again, the house appears empty. Though Tom's been in the game long enough to know that no response doesn't mean no one's home. And he has a cunning plan how to find out more. We've knocked on, there's no answer, there's no curtain, so we're just trying to find a set of ladders so we can just have a quick look upstairs and see if there's anything there. Could have already gone, but if we get the ladders, we can have a look upstairs and we can satisfy our own curiosity there. There's no evidence of residence, but Tom isn't giving up that easily. Is he there, mate? No. Is there somebody there? No. Well, there's a wardrobe that's shut. Well, I might just knock on, see you might pop out. <laughs> Cheers, bud. We've had a quick look upstairs. There's no bedding, there's no furniture. There's no signs of anybody staying there, um, or sleeping there overnight, at least. As with the first house, there's no joy at the second property but they get a tip-off that the suspect has been spotted dumping a bag on some nearby wasteland. Looks like it's uh, a bag of this lad's clothing. The guy says he works here, This one of the lads has seen, the lad who matches our description, walk up here yesterday and drop this bag. This is clothing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, the trackies. This is trackies. Just right. Cool. I love that. They've also had intel that he's been keeping in a garden shed nearby. Shed door's open, you know, it's got a load of stuff in there. And you can just see there, a nice little bed for him where he slept. So he's out and about. The information is that he's walking up and down the canals. And that's not all they've found. It's a bit of a random place to have a kitchen knife. We'll have that. Now thinking the suspect's trying to get away on the nearby canals, Tim and Tom head in one direction while their colleague goes the opposite way. A number of canals in Middlewich, so he could be using those as, the, as ways of getting around. And 20 minutes later, they get a call for assistance. He's managed to get hold of him. He's had a bit of a foot chase with him. Uh, there he was, he was on the Tadalco path. The suspect is already in cuffs, and Tim and Tom head off to retrieve something from the towpath. He tries to get away from us, so we have a bit of a tussle. During that tussle, for some reason, he's tried to discard a balaclava that he's been wearing. Hopefully the lads will recover that. So this uh, balaclava, it's a nice bit of evidence as so we're hoping that this is going to link our man to these robberies in the Maxwell and Conkton areas. He would have carried on offending if we hadn't got hold of him today, so yeah, stopped a few more crimes and uh, yeah, good result. Hopefully he'll go prison. The man was later charged with robbery, possession of a knife, blackmail, criminal damage, theft and assault. He's currently on remand awaiting trial. Brand new, next tonight here on Channel 5, the murder of April Jones, a heartbreaking story and its impact five years on. You could pop over to Spike to join Jamie Theakston for no-nonsense motorway policing, all new traffic cops under attack. But if you love NCIS Los Angeles, you better head for 5 USA, where Callum's caught in the middle of a thrilling season premiere.
Resist him! arrest. This is police interceptors. <laughs> Future crime. Bad egg, isn't he? The criminal world is evolving fast. But the interceptors are striking back. 12 tents in this bit. With mind blowing tech. In this special episode, we'll be getting a glimpse into the future of crime fighting. With the teams from Cumbria. This is the dog. Anybody out there? Come out now. And Durham and Cleveland. We'll also be heading out on patrol with Cheshire's interceptors. Wow. To see tech in action on the front line. With mashed motorists. Turn off, mate. Unbelievable drug farms. Yeah, this is a professional setup. And gut wrenching pursuits. Move up, move up. This is Police Interceptors Future Crime. Just amazing. Over the last few years, the UK police have focused on putting more technology into the hands of its officers. The reason? To help tackle some of the biggest challenges facing the force. Whether it's identifying slippery suspects, tracking dangerous fugitives, or cutting down on paperwork. Which is boring. Yeah. Technology has the power to revolutionise policing. Cheshire Police are one of the forces leading the way with this fresh wave of tech. Their brand new tablet is a key weapon in the fight against crime. With instant access to ANPR cameras and the police national computer, interceptors can now track and ID crooks faster than ever before. To see it in action, I've come out on patrol with Cheshire interceptor Ian Blanchard, a tactical pursuit advisor with over a decade of criminal hunting know-how. Approaching 6 p.m., a job comes in. Go on, I'll follow you then. Interceptor Keith Parsons has just called in with some disturbing intel. So what's uh, what's Keith picked up? Uh, he's just got an AMPR hit, forward focus. It's a guy who's wanted for rape. The car is connected to a man suspected of sexual assault, and it's just pinged up on an ANPR camera heading down the motorway. Police have been after the car for two days, and Intel suggests it could be heading back up the motorway any time within the next 90 minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the vehicle to pass by us and then do a tactical stop, so uh, a T-pad. Two miles from the stakeout point, we can't afford to waste any time. It's going to pull out straight. It's going to put, yeah. But traffic's getting in our way. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. Right, that focus with the uh, male wanted for rape is coming this way. Right, is he likely to be behind us or...? Possibly. Us? Well, Keith's going ahead. We're yep. going to sit up here just in case. So hopefully he um, could be behind us somewhere. Parked up on the hard shoulder, the new tech comes into its own. ANPR cameras along the motorway and built into Blanche's car pick up the reg numbers of every passing motor streaming the data directly to his tablet. So that should give us, as soon as it hits that, yeah. it should automatically ping up on there within a second. It's scanning all three lanes. Yeah, all three lanes. So when the focus goes past, the reg will show up on the tablet and we'll be after it. What's that one there? There it is. It's, going four, seven, four. it's in lane three. Seven, four, four, yeah. The car has just sped past us down the outside lane, but Blanche is steaming up behind. Tango 6-4, that uh, Focus is in lane three, approaching six. Have you got it in time? I have, I'm directly behind it. Got any other patrols at all, please, so we can uh, try and put a preemptive on it. What's the plan of action now, then? Earlier we're going to try and get five patrols. Cars. Yeah, um, we're going to see how many we can get from Merseyside now to assist yeah. us with the stop. I'm going to try and get a preemptive uh, box on this you. now. We're going for a T-pack. Keith's a mile ahead on the hard shoulder, with more interceptors gathered further up along a slipway. 
five four. I'm just ahead at the turn off. Blanchy takes command. Yeah, come out now, Keith. Uh, we're just approaching you. Passing you now. Keith pulls out and latches onto our tail. Blanchy relays his plan to control. Yeah, attention to a three car box for possible. I think we've possibly got four if we use the uh, rear car for safety. The other interceptors have now slipped in behind us, but Blanchy knows the plan could be foiled if the suspect makes a run for it. Up ahead, the focus looks to be considering a move. I think he's uh, coming off here. No, he isn't. He's slowing down. I think he might be thinking about it. If this bloke was planning on doing a runner, he seems to have changed his mind. But Blanchy can't take any more chances. All the cars are ready, they must act now. A van ahead is blocking the right-hand lane. Come on, transit, get out the road. It clears. Yeah, there he is, yeah. Blanchy gives the signal. Move up, move up. Keith pulls in fast around the front. Another car blocks in the side, and we close up the rear. Keith is first to the driver. He doesn't want to risk the bloke making a run for it. Turn it off, mate. Because you're quite info that somebody wanted on board this car, so we're going to check your details, mate. If it's not you, you'll be good to go. Jump out. We don't know for sure if the driver's our suspect, so Keith checks his identity matches the intel. What's the lad's name is wanted? Suspicion of rape. The driver's ID checks out. He is the man we're after. But I'm still trying to take it all in. Watching that all take place was just amazing. It makes me wonder what was going through the suspect's mind as he was driving without a care in the world. And then, oh, this is strange. I've got one, no, I've got two police cars on my tail. OK, they're not flashing, they're not doing anything. Let me change lanes. Change lanes. Oh, these squad cars are changing lanes with me. Now there's another one. Now there's three, there's four. There he goes. All in all, it's been a textbook operation. Good result. Uh, stop. Nobody injured. Nobody, uh, nothing damaged. And we got the one in custody that we wanted. So, good day. The driver's also been given a drug wipe and the results are in. So the suspect has tested positive for both cannabis and cocaine. So he's going to get taken to the nearest um, police station and processed there. He's going to have his blood taken so that he can determine exactly how much cocaine and cannabis is in his system. The test revealed that the driver had taken cannabis and cocaine. So thanks to old tech in the shape of some heavy duty police motors and new tech, that's Blanche's tablet, the man is being investigated for drug driving and has been charged with two counts of sexual assault. He awaits his day in court. Coming up on Police Interceptor's Future Crime, a dodgy driver gives Don the runaround. Right, Chase, it's on, kids. A drug device spills the beans on a doped-up motorist. You're under arrest, mate, for possession of cannabis and drug driving. And Otis goes on the run from tech and teeth. <laughs> the most indispensable part of a copper's crime fighting kit used to be, well, a little low tech. But now our boys in blue are hitting the road with a handful of rather more sophisticated gadgets. I've come to Congleton Station in Cheshire to meet interceptor Don Booth, a tactical advisor with 15 years on the force. When it comes to heroes, Don's all about Batman. And he's given me a rundown of his crime-fighting tech, starting with the new tablet. Right, Don, what have you got for me? Right, firstly, well, this is a new one. This is our new tablet. Yes. We used one of these tablets earlier to hook up to the ANPR cameras and catch our sexual assault suspect. They also connect to the police national computer. We've got access to every force system, all instantly on the fingertips. So you're basically walking around with the entire police database under your arm, yeah. courtesy of that? Yeah. 
Don's crime fighting kit doesn't end with the tablet. All right, uh, what else have you got? Forward looking infrared. This is a new piece of kit that we're taking out and about with us. One reason is for cannabis factories. Heat signatures. Yeah, yep. massive heat signatures. Yep. Okay. The other benefit is if we have a pursuit, people make off, people hide from us. Yep. I can see Mr. Burgle hiding in the hedge. Here we go. There he is. Look at that. You found me. I have. I'm a hot. You are, you, you're very hot, Don. <laughs> you eh? tell my wife. <laughs> hey. <laughs> The handheld thermal imaging camera is like a scaled-down version of the type choppers use to track missing persons. And then finally... Got the fingerprint reader. Right. OK, so I can have your right index finger. Yep. Here we go. This tech scans a fingerprint, checks it against the police database for any matches and can confirm a suspect's identity. There we go, there's your fingerprints. Oh, wow. It's vibrated in my hand, it's green. I don't want green. <laughs> I don't want that. So that's no match. So green is good for me, right? Good for you, not so good for me, because I, I, I like it when people lie to me. OK. And this is a good way to catch them out. Right. And the other benefit is, is that most criminals know we have these. Did one the other week, and I got this out, and he went, oh, I'll, I'll tell you who I actually am. Right. But it's not, I'm not, you know, so we don't even go down the line of trying to lie to okay. us. So rather than just a fingerprint reader, it's also a portable lie detector. With this kit in the car, you've got an upgraded interceptor able to locate, track and identify targets far quicker. Later that night, we get the perfect chance to test Don's special lie detector. Patrolling crew in the unmarked 3 Series, a car hammers it right past us. And Don's not about to let it go. Right, Chase, it's on, Gibbs. The motor's weaving around the streets. Yeah, they're trying to lose you. A flash of the blues. And the car pulls in. But is Don right to be suspicious? Hi, mate, you all right? Hello, mate, you all right? Have you got any idea on you? Oh, uh, not on me, mate. Is it your car? Oh, uh, I just borrowed it from a friend. Oh, right. and you were sure to drive it? Uh, no, I just... Uh, no, I'm going to say you're not insured, are you? No. So the bloke says it's not his motor, but he's also not carrying ID. And there's a question mark as to whether he's insured. It's not looking good. So who have you borrowed the car from? Is it your mate that you're staying with? What's his name? My, uh, his name is... I know his by nickname, I don't know his by real name. So we're not even sure who the owner of the car is. Don's hoping the fingerprint machine can at least confirm this guy's ID. Okay. That's just going to do a check, just to make sure that you've not come to our attention that you're telling me the truth as to you are who you say you are. Some people lie to us. And then comes the bombshell. Well, I've changed your name a couple like, months ago. All right, but you've not been arrested before, have you? No, uh, but when I changed my name before, yeah, I was. Have you been arrested in the, the United Kingdom? Like, I'm not... I've been... You know what happened? Uh, before that... Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't ask me if I changed my name, innit? Well, it's not a normal question that I ask, is it? <laughs> I was. Like, when I had my uh, name, I was arrested for, for one day. So the fella's saying he's changed his name. But what he really means is that he gave Don a false name to begin with. Bad idea when the lie detector's on hand. You told me you were David and your date of birth was 97, and that's not the 20... Well, you've not changed your date of birth, have you? You could. Hey? You can. You can change your date of birth? Yeah. No, you can't. With the bloke's real name and actual date of birth confirmed, control radio's in with the bad news. Yeah. And you're a disqualified driver until the 1st of May. Yeah. So you're under arrest for disqualified driving. Tried to lie and it's not worked, so there you go, mate. But he's saying, I've never been arrested before. And then he starts telling me he has got a different name and I should have asked him for his other name. Right. And I Because you'd know that the first time. Because there's always a question asked is what's your name and yeah. what's your other name? Yeah, yeah. And then obviously I've done the fingerprint, it's come back and it's totally different. Totally different name, totally different date of birth. Right. Run that through, disqualified driver. Following his run-in with Don and the fingerprint machine, this bloke was charged with driving whilst disqualified and without insurance. He's been banned from driving for 18 months and has been given 300 hours unpaid work. So once again, Don's fingerprint reader stroke lie detector comes into its own. Every year, an estimated 250,000 people go missing in the UK. 
be it chasing vulnerable runaways or even tracking down fugitives. Finding people is a key part of police work and the clever use of tech can help. When the cops need an eye in the sky for missing people, they usually fire up the multi-million pound, 150 mile an hour chopper. But up in Cumbria, police are turning to something a little smaller. Drones. I've come to Greystoke Park in rugged northeast Cumbria to meet Superintendent Matt Kennelly, lead cop on the county's drone initiative. What type of operations would you employ a drone for? We primarily looked at them for missing persons, um, especially around the rural locations. But what we found is that we're using them for everything from capturing crime scenes to looking for fugitives that are maybe on the run from us. Matt's drones have flown more than 100 missions over the past year, including helping to locate an escaped convict using its onboard tracking tech. They've got a thermal camera on this one. Ah. So that'll give us a different view from the air and we'll be able to pick up heat sources much better for finding people. I'm going to test how effective these drones are at tracing missing persons by going on the run myself in the chilly Cumbria wilderness. I've got a five minute head start before Matt sends in the drones. If they manage to spot me, it's over to the dog team to sniff me out. Okay, so <laughs> I've absolutely no idea where I'm going, so I really am uh, a fugitive. We've got a subject, Otis. We know he's light on his feet. We know he's capable of escape and evasion. And it's our job to find him. If I keep running, try and put as much distance between myself and my pursuers. My concern is I won't actually be able to find anywhere to hide. This test mimics exactly how a real search mission works. Matt's drones scour an area from the air, one fitted with a high definition camera, the other with a thermal imaging camera designed to detect body heat. My best hope for evasion is to find cover and soon. Oh look, there's a quarry down there. I think this will do for now. But back at base, one of Matt's drones spots a heat source. I mean, it's a man-made structure, but we've got a little bit of a heat differential. So it's just, uh, we're gonna have a little look at it. The dog team go in. It's a false alarm. They've not found me yet. <coughs> Thermal imaging cameras can pick up heat differences in man-made objects. In this case, a shed but the drones are onto another hotspot in seconds. So essentially what we're looking at is a heat source just around here. What I'm asking you to do is deploy with the dog. We'll guide you in and hopefully we'll be able to identify and rule in or out. We can't identify, we know we've got heat source in there, but whether it's our subject or not, we don't know at this point. Two drones, two drones. Police officer with the dog, anybody out there? Come out now! <laughs> all right, all right. Ah, I've been rumbled. I'll tell you what, I thought it was going to take a lot longer to be found given the expanse of the area that they had potentially to search. Uh, I, for one, am glad it didn't take much longer. I need to get reacquainted with my, the feeling in my legs. More and more forces are turning to drone technology. With the ability to do everything from coordinating nighttime firearms exercises to tracking missing persons, the sky's the limit. Police deal with around 150,000 drug offences in the UK every year. With crimes like possession with intent to supply and trafficking, not to mention nearly 8,000 cases of drug driving, it's a huge problem. But thanks to drug wipe tech, 
Cops can test drivers' saliva for coke or cannabis right there on the road. A bit like a pregnancy test. A red line after 10 minutes means you're in trouble. 2am, the outskirts of Stockport. I'm out on patrol with Cheshire Interceptor Mike Jennings. With 13 years on the force, this tenacious copper has an uncanny eye for trouble. Like someone shifting about in an unlit parked car. What are you doing sat here, mate? Hey, I've just pulled over for a second to roll a cigarette. To roll a cigarette? Yeah. Nothing else? No, nothing else. Nothing more untoward? No. no Might cannabis? Uh... Have no word with him. Uh, the fella's just sat in there. Um, says he had a couple of drinks at a concert about hours ago. He could just be chilling out to sober up. Mike's not buying it. Defo? No, definitely. Bit of a weird place to park up this. I know, yeah. To roll Sorry. a fag. Yeah. Makes my suspicions go massively through the roof. And then it comes. All right, I can see there's traces of cannabis on the floor there, or bits of what looked like it is. Or maybe it's just tobacco. Fellow interceptor Al Robinson rolls up to help search the chap's car. For all we're finding so far is a bit of a mess. Got no sense of pride in this vehicle, I don't know I'm not. Meanwhile, over in Al's car, Mike whips out the wipe. OK, this is a roadside drugs wipe. Have you done one of these before, mate? <laughs> Lean forward and open your mouth as wide as you can. Interceptors have only been carrying these drug wipes for a couple of years. One quick lick gives cops enough proof to get a drug driver off the road and down the nick. This takes about eight minutes to get a result from it. Mm -hmm. The lad's admitted to a couple of spliffs, but Mike's pushing for more. So there's two spliffs. That's it. Nothing else. Yeah. Defo? Still pushing. Any advance on that? Yeah, that's it. Just it... what's in the glove box. Bingo! A bag of around 80 quid's worth of weed, complete with cannabis grinder. I don't really have much of a sense of smell, but even when I'm getting something out of here as well. That's quite a lot. It's all in just in a couple of bags, but most people we stop have, like, one little snap bag or a couple of little snap bags, but there's quite a bit there. Mike breaks the bad news. You're under arrest, mate, for possession of cannabis. And there's more, as the verdict comes in from the drug swipe. Quite a strong line on the top there for cannabis. See the red yeah. line? Yeah. Blood tests in custody came back positive for cannabis. The lab was given a 12-month ban, plus over 300 quid in fines for drug driving and possession. With over 50 people a year killed by drug drivers, the simple drug wipe is life-saving tech. Coming up on Police Interceptor's Future Crime, cutting-edge cops smash an armed gang, a raid reveals an amazing half a million in weed, and Otis comes face-to-face -face with a shocking hit-and-run. That's disgusting, that. To bag the bad guys, cops need to know who they're dealing with and what they've been up to. The Police National Computer, or PNC, makes that possible. It's a system of highly sensitive databases holding millions of personal records, vehicle records and transactions. Being able to tap into that data instantly from anywhere can make all the difference. It's Saturday night. And as Cheshire's weekend revelers hit the bars, I'm out on the road with interceptor Keith Parsons. A former club DJ who swapped disc scratching for crook catching over a decade ago. It's been fairly quiet so far, until news comes in of a crash near Warrington Centre. Church Street, Warrington. Um, now a report of entrapment. I think one of the drivers has run off. We've got a lot of patrols looking in the area. What have we got, Keith? Uh, it's a collision. Um, two cars, I think. Um, someone's trapped. Uh, there's a kid in the car and the driver's legged it. 
Eyewitnesses report one of the drivers, a male dressed in black, is making a run for it. Also heading to the crash is fellow interceptor and dedicated dad, Ian Blanchard. It's bad enough involving adults, but when it's kids involved, yeah, being a parent, you just, it's your worst nightmare, really. I scan the roads for a fleeing driver, but arriving at the scene, he's long gone. It's just the mess he's left behind. Single occupant from the BM, and then it's female and little and the Yaris. Male, male, little. Male and little and the Yaris, right. As paramedics deal with the injured pair from the other car, details emerge about what may have caused the crash. So, the driver of the BMW that you can see here is suspected of being um, drunk while driving. Um, he has done a runner. So police will be trying to get a full description of the driver of the car to try and find him. There was initially um, a child trapped in the Yaris, but that child has since been uh, um, released from the car. So um, good news in that respect. Uh, and so far, no serious injuries that we're hearing about. The people in the other car may be OK, but the Beamer driver is now a wanted man. As a police dog tries to pick up his scent, Blanchy turns to some crook tracking tech to find out who owns the BMW. Using the brand new tablet to enter the car's reg into the police national computer, he soon reveals some disturbing details that may relate to our man. Um, so a bad egg, isn't he? Yeah. Stuck him on the face during a robbery. It looks like the car's owner might have some previous with the police meaning the PNC will also have a record of places he's been staying. So it's a local address, is it? It's not from another county? He's, um, he's got links, well, yeah, he's got links to an address which is just up the way, which is kind of the way he's legged it yes. as well. Um, but he does have his last known address on PNC is Liverpool. The insurance to the car is local to the uh, where we're looking for. Yep. So um, he's going to be laying low somewhere. To me, the fact that anyone could run away from this is just shocking. I'd like to think if you own the car and you, you hit another car, drunk or not, you'd, you'd hang around, wouldn't you? Especially to see how much damage you've done. You know, what if, he, what if he had done serious damage to the owner of the car or the child in the back and you've run off? That's disgusting, that. Arming interceptors with incredible tech like the tablet means criminals can't hide for long. And sure enough, our hit-and-run driver turned himself in the very next day. He's being investigated for dangerous driving and leaving the scene of an accident. This investigation is ongoing. But it's not yet time to pack away the tech, because within minutes of us leaving the scene of the crash... Quick we see yet another case of shocking driving. A car bombs it across the junction right in front of us. Keith gives the motor a flashing blue tap on the shoulder and soon catches that familiar whiff. How much have you had to drink? Uh, just a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. I can smell it. Are you going to be getting locked up, do you reckon? Sorry? Are you going to be getting locked up? How many have you had? A little bit. I can smell it from here. How long, when, did, when was your last drink? When? Yeah. Uh, 20 minutes ago. 20 minutes, oh, perfect. Sit tight a second. Even I can see. Can't put, put your on brake on, put your on brake on. On brake on. It's fair to say this bloke's not at his best, so it's time for a little trusted tech. Three lips, blow, keep going. No ID on him. Um, he's been out drinking. He's getting all the tech thrown at him, to be fair. Thomas Clough, you failed the breath test, mate. He's under arrest for drink driving. He's blown over twice the legal limit on the roadside breathalyzer, and he's still struggling to come up with any ID. Do you have a licence? Unfortunately, my wallet is my home. You should have stayed at home with your wallet, really, shouldn't you? Rather than get behind the wheel of a car. I know. I, I have a driving licence for, like, uh, 15 years. Oh, for the first time, so, time I, I wanted to go get yeah, a drink with a car. Down, Oops. I mean, I mean... Oh, the first time you've been I caught. Uh, sorry? First time you've been caught, you mean? 
With the lad holding no ID, Blanchi uses his tablet to check his name against the PNC database and see if there's any history the cops should know about. Let's have a look. There's no record of any previous on the new tablet, but with the van arriving to take the lad to custody, his fate now rests in the hands of some old familiar tech. Step up there, mate, just be careful. The big evidential breathalyzing machine at the Nick, which will give the final verdict on how much booze is in his system. Funny thing is, he's saying to us in there, 15 years I've been driving, I keep telling my friends, don't drink and drive, don't drink and drive. <laughs> you know, what does he do? Get in his car for a 10 minute walk. And that one mistake could cost this fella big. The evidential breathalyzer at the Nick confirmed him to be well over the limit. He's since failed to appear at court and is now wanted by the police. But with the Cheshire interceptors wielding this kind of tech, he won't be wanted for long. Thousands of people across the UK are currently wanted by the police. To find them, cops don't just rely on amazing tech, but also special teams of human computers known as super recognisers. Their rare gift for memorising faces came to the fore during the 2011 London riots, where super recognisers in the Met identified a third of the offenders just from CCTV footage. We've come to Greenwich University to meet Doctor of Psychology Josh Davis. How you doing? Yeah, very well. Well, Hello, Josh. Greenwich. How are you? All right? Who tests police recruits for this incredible gift, possessed by less than 2% of the population. We're going to find out if we've got what it takes to be super recognisers. Are we Are working together on this one? Yeah, sort of, but you're still in competition. Good. <laughs> Just don't want to get dragged down here. Right? <laughs> in this test, we've got 14 pretend suspects on our desk. We have to correctly identify any that appear on our mock CCTV footage. A point for each one ID'd, a point taken off for a mistake. OK, let's, uh, let's do this thing. Ah, yeah, this lady, there. How already? Yes. Yeah, well done, well done. What? This lady yeah. is right here. But you got that from so far away, you can't see her face. Yeah, but I'm a super recognizer. Oh, all right. That's one point to Edwards. Oh, stop, that woman just gone past, this lady here. Come on, have it. There, she's younger in, in this so. footage. No, I'm afraid it's not the right person. person. And one minus point to Dealey. Wow. Yes! Well, That's what I said! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what I, I said! Right. I yeah, 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 yes. well done. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I did get it first. Yeah, but you also had a fail. <laughs> Dealey's clawed his point back. He's now on zero. Now oh, she's come through twice. That's definitely her. Yeah. Yeah. That is actually oh, a result for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is the ability Josh is looking for is innate, hardwired into the brain from birth rather than learned. It even helps super recognizers spot people who are disguised far better than any software. Yeah, that's right. That's definitely one. Yeah, well done. So, test over, are we super recognisers? You were supposed to make four identifications, but between you, you made three. OK. Yeah. Rick, you identified two and a half because you were a little bit late with your second. Yeah. Otis, you recognise one. Otis, <laughs> you are definitely not a super recogniser. Rick. Maybe. I probably am. Yeah. <laughs> you, you could say it. You, could you, say it. you may be, but we always ask the police to take a series of different tests uh -huh. to confirm that ability. Uh -huh. OK, so neither of us are exactly the human computers that super recognisers are. But at least I'm better than Otis. Do you think you might have face blindness? <laughs> There are around two and a half thousand miles of motorway in the UK. For organised crime groups and opportunist thieves alike, that represents a network of high-speed escape routes. But watching their every move are places like this, the Northwest Motorway Police Group. Using a network of around 300 CCTV cameras to monitor over 400 miles of motorway, they're helping cops catch up with the crooks. In Staffordshire, a vanload of armed robbers speeds down the highway after knocking off a jeweller's in Cheshire. 
The van was identified by the motorway police group as it sped down the highway. And that intel relayed to the central motorway police to pick up the pursuit through Staffordshire. But now, at 70 miles an hour, the van's dodging every attempt to get it stopped. And then this happens. Approaching a roundabout, this bloke comes flying out. It's not clear if he fell or jumped, but the pursuit becomes too dangerous and is called off. The four men in the van were later found and sentenced to a combined total of 30 years for armed robbery. Thanks partly to intel provided by the motorway group. Inspector Neil Anson is one of the lead officers from the team. I'm seeing some massive screens here, Neil, but what exactly are we looking at? Yeah, these are the CCTV cameras that we can use to, to monitor the northwest region. We can pick up on all kinds of things from this. Uh, we had 52,500 incidents referred to us here for the Northwest Motorway Police Group. 52,500 incidents in just one year is an incredible figure. But when it comes to fighting crime on the motorways, the stats are even more impressive. Based on the, the 2015 figures, we recovered just short of uh, £1 million worth of uh, property and just short of £10 million worth of uh, drugs. That's, that's drugs worth uh, £10 million on the streets. Wow. Something takes place and it's a, pretty much a one call to us. We get it in our system and then we know, we're looking for that vehicle. This system means the interceptors can get behind the bad guys before they even know it. Still to come on Police Interceptor's future crime. A brand new device gives Otis an incredible look at one of Cheshire's biggest weed busts. 12 tents in this bit, 2 tents in 14 tents. We've seen gadgets get drugged up drivers off our roads. But cutting edge tech can also help the cops get to the source of the drugs and shut it down. 5 p.m. Warrington. Interceptors have just uncovered a massive cannabis farm hidden in the top floor of a warehouse. Right, we're just coming near to the site that we found this uh, cannabis farm today. As you can see, it's quite. I've been given exclusive access to the place with John Gardner. With 22 years on the force, the petrol headed copper has seen his fair share of grow farms. But this is something else. Now what we're looking at is we're looking at an industrial unit, okay, which is obviously is corrugated. Yeah. So we have issues with that and certainly with the roof as well because the corrugated metal actually reflects the heat back into the building. A lot of that heat John's talking about is generated by special lamps used in cannabis farms to keep the plants warm and help them grow. But these secret places are revealed by an incredible piece of kit, the world's first thermal imaging integrated smartphone. Using this, yeah. so what you were talking about with the temperature being reflected back, back into, into the, building, the building, you can see that there because that's, that's blue. That's blue. The heat coming out of the building with the open door, you can see yeah. it's a good few degrees warmer. The Cheshire cops are evaluating this awesome device for use in the field, but its ability to spot a drug farm is clear. So using this equipment, we can tell, like just coming up to a house and looking at a house, yep. how much heat is coming out through the roof. And if that heat is Excessive, not normal, yeah. it's not normal yeah. we'll do all sorts of checks on uh, it, okay. check on the houses right, and, and right. things like that. We'll look at our intel right. and see where that comes from. Is there any us. chance we could have a look at the farm itself? Yes, if you just follow me, we'll Excellent. come into the yep, way that we'll, we'll go. Do. Heading upstairs, I'm faced with an amazing setup, which police believe contains as much as £400,000 worth of weed. Yeah, this is a professional setup. As you can tell, right. these are hydroponic tents. They've even managed to sneak this one past the electricity companies with some illegal tampering. So what they've done is they've gone from where it first comes into the building, Yep. they've then connected straight into the breakers bypassing everything right. else and straight up into the building right. which is feeding all this so there's no way of measuring there's no way of measuring how much electricity because they've bypassed the right. whole system right 
John tells me that after two decades of police work, it's the most impressive grow farm he's ever seen. So we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve tents in this bit, two tents in the fourteen tents. And as I say, this equipment's not cheap. Just one alone is a lot of money. So where somebody's investing a lot of money a lot into of this. Yeah. And someone's lost a lot of money yeah. with you guys coming across them as well and shutting them down. So despite all the fantastic tech that you have at your fingertips, yes. am I right in that it was, it was a nose that detected uh, the smell here? It's what we call a Bobby's nose. Yeah. Somebody's gone past, what's that smell? And we've investigated it. You can't beat the sensory, the human senses. So far, one suspect has been arrested in connection with this enormous cannabis farm and investigations are ongoing to trace others. But one thing's for certain, if the interceptors have cutting-edge cameras like this in their arsenal, drug factories won't stand a chance. Up in County Durham, police are looking for novel ways to educate Joe Public about the dangers of drug driving. Interceptor Damo Stevens has invited me to road test a technology-infused suit, which incredibly makes you feel just like you've been taking drugs. I'm going to be getting behind the wheel wearing it. OK. Leg and wrist weights slow reaction time and affect balance. Knee and elbow bandages restrict movement. A tremor generator makes one hand shake. A neck brace restricts head movement. Sight impairment specs produce tunnel vision. And finally, headphones play a low drone noise, adding to the confusion and distraction. This tech-heavy suit mimics some of the effects of taking drugs like cannabis, cocaine, LSD and heroin. Yeah, seatbelt. Yep. Yep, safety's important, isn't it? And that's why I'm testing the suit in controlled conditions on a private road. Oh, that's already <laughs> taking longer than it should. Oh, I'm back at driving school. Oh, blimey. Right, so I don't know which eye to trust for the roundabout. If this is what it's like to drug drive, it's clear just how dangerous it is. There is such a lack of trust in what I'm seeing. Because I'm focusing so much on just moving the car and going forward, I know I'm not using my mirrors. So the mechanics of driving I have, still have, but the perception of the perception the is the world around you is, is, is all over the place. And it's funny because one minute there's a bit of confidence in a movement, it's like, yeah, yeah, I've got this. And then something creeps into my periphery and it makes me think, oh no, no, wait a minute, slow down. This is this isn't quite right. See, I've no idea how close to the curb I am. So Otis, take the, the kid off. Tell me what you think. That was not a nice experience at all. Um, I felt as though in my sober state, I could compensate for the, the weight on the leg and, and the vibrating hand. Um, but what I couldn't trust at all was my vision. Um, I felt as though the, the, the straight road ahead was, would actually look more like an X. Right. Um, and every now and again, the curb would creep up in the periphery and make me you know, second guess what I was seeing. And other members of the public, other cars, cyclists, yeah. pedestrians traffic lights, junctions. Yeah, it's a good bit of kit, this. Good. Yeah. Sadly, drug driving is on the increase, but by using technology like this suit to ram home the risks, the roads of the future could be a lot safer. Embracing new technologies and making smarter use of existing tech is helping the cops prevent crimes more effectively and crack them quicker. And in a fast-changing world, it's never been more critical to be at the cutting edge of fighting crime. <laughs> and the interceptors are back next Monday night at 8. 
All Action Mondays continues tonight, and the staff of Paddington Station 24-7 had better be on their toes because the Queen's on the concourse. Or pop over to Spike when new criminals caught on camera pull no punches with police officers. Meanwhile, there's fantastic drama on 5 USA, unmissable new season NCIS Los Angeles. White male, black t-shirt. Why are you trying to arrest me? When the sun goes down, get on the deck. Many criminals use the cover of darkness to cause mayhem. But the interceptors are waiting for them. On the floor! I'm Otis Dealey. Take on the first, take on the first. I'd make a very bad cop. I'm Rick Edwards. They bashed into us. The arms at the business end. And in tonight's special episode of Police Interceptors, we've been given unrestricted access to the teams from Durham and Cleveland. Oh, so there's a further three bags. As they go out on the night shift. Can you get fire, please? It looks like one of the cars are starting to go. So the hits just keep on coming, really. Coming up on tonight's Interceptors After Dark special, Spike pursues a runaway driver. Out and running. <laughs> I've got no sympathy for people like this. Damo pieces together evidence in the aftermath of a horrific accident. It's very fortunate that no one was killed. That's astonishing. And Rick makes a bold claim. All the criminals are scared of me, mate. <laughs> They're all at home. For most law-abiding people, night is when you relax, unwind and sleep. But it can be a busy time for criminals and for those who hunt them. Get that door up now! Over half of all violent crimes, 80% of non-domestic burglaries and the majority of criminal damage all happen at night. Get on the floor! Are you ready for a night shift? Yes, I am. I'm going to go out with Ian and the dogs. OK, I'm going to go out with Spike in the unmarked. Have you got your stab vest on? Yes, I have. <clears throat> Let's go and catch some bad guys. Yes. Watch some people catch some bad guys. That was an insult. It's just after 8 o'clock on Friday evening when we leave Spennymore Station and we're barely out of the gates when the first call comes in. Five minutes into the night shift and we're already called to a pursuit. They don't hang about round here, do they? We're at the hall of uh, Durham Fleet, uh, so there's going to be six, six Durham cars, uh, four Cleveland cars, and I believe all of Northumbria are travelling to this as well. Veteran interceptor Spike is an advanced driver, advanced motorcyclist and off-road motorcyclist. But tonight, he's in the unmarked BMW 330, nicknamed Black Beauty. Spike slows up and waits to see if the stolen BMW pings any nearby ANPR cameras. But something else catches his eye. Well, let's see what he's up to. And that's not our car, but that thing was flying. It's not the intended target, but Spike thinks it's worth finding out why this guy's in such a hurry. Not the vehicle, not the X1 that we're after, but there's something incredibly high speed. Spike trails the driver, who's going double the speed limit. At the roundabout, on the roundabout, on the roundabout, not one, not one, not two, not two. Taking the third, taking the third towards Norton, A139. At the roundabout, at the roundabout, one, taking the first, taking the first. Road name is South Road. In Black Beauty, Spike just looks like another motorist. Vehicle is lit up. But with the blue lights on, the car goes from unmarked to unmistakable. This is the speeder's opportunity to stop. Let's have some support then. But he doesn't take it. Given the way he's driving, the cops suspect something dodgy is going on. He's booting it down residential streets, but Spike is right on his tail. The guy mounts the pavement and takes a cycleway in an attempt to escape, but he soon runs out of path. 
He's off, he's off, he's off, he's off, look. Hands! Show me your hands! Show me your hands! On the floor! Hands! Hands! The issue is, immediately, the driver of the vehicle has legged it, scarped it, passenger gone. Arrested, passenger arrested, driver out and running down the footpath. Passenger of the car stepped out, put his hands up. Um, no fight whatsoever. The driver's trying to escape under the cover of darkness. There's woodland lining the footpath and plenty of places to hide. But Spike isn't on his own for long as the full force of the interceptors start to arrive on the scene. Straight ahead, Justin. Can't give you a description other than a lad. And the first there is dog handler Justin Moffat with Elsa. I always thought that in order for dogs to give chase, they, they would have to get a scent of some kind. Um, but our dog has, has literally just been let off the leash and, and gone. This pursuit is far from over. In the darkness, officers and dog are on the hunt. Still to come on Police Interceptors After Dark Special, I get a taste of what it must be like to be on the wrong side of the law. Game's up. Spike chases down a drunken joyrider. Out and running. And I witness a late night firearms raid firsthand. We're out on a night shift with the Durham and Cleveland interceptors. Spike spotted a car booting along the residential streets in Billingham. Not the vehicle, not the X1 that we're after, but there's something incredibly high speed. He put on his blues and twos. The vehicle was lit up. But the driver was in no mood to stop. Let's have some support then. After several miles, the fleeing car drove down a footpath, but it was a dead end. He's off, he's off, he's off, he's off, look. Show me your hands! Show me Spikes your collared the passenger, but the drivers escaped into the bushes under the cover of darkness. Seconds later, a police dog arrived on the scene. Straight ahead, Justin. Can't give you a description other than a lad. Now, police dog Elsa is hunting for the man in the woods. One good thing about dogs is their noses work just as effectively in pitch darkness. So hiding from sight isn't going to work. Put your arm behind your back! <laughs> Looks like they've got someone um, who's being escorted back up now. Both the speeding car's occupants have been caught quickly thanks to the sharp eyes of Spike and the sharper nose of Elsa. Haven't had the lad in sight. She's gone on air sent alone. Gone on into the thorn bushes here uh, and indicated by barking. So I followed her in. Uh, cut myself to ribbons through all the bushes and the lads laid in the bushes so it's a textbook job for us. So she's in the biscuits tonight. It's about now I started to wonder where Rick had got to. Oh, <laughs> here he is. Now, I've arrived a bit late. You have, yeah. Just as Not for want of trying. Shall I fill you in? We were absolutely hooning it around looking for this. Shall I fill you in? We didn't, yes okay. please. Uh, um, Spike all of a sudden said that car was going a bit quick and gave chase, turned on the blues and twos, the car did not slow down. Okay, so through fairly residential areas, about 100, 110, um, they eventually, I don't know whether it was a mistake or by design, they came down here, which is a... This feels like a mistake. Uh, looking back, I think Rick's right. But this wasn't the driver's first error. That was thinking he could outrun Spike. Not what we came out for. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, but it was not the intended target. Any crime? Yes. I'm interested in any crime. Yeah. After I've cleared that crime, yeah. you yeah, wouldn't no. know a crime had even been there. Been there, yeah. Yeah. So clean, it you retrospectively recanonized everything. Eat your dinner off of the areas that I've cleansed of crime. <laughs> I, like, I like that. There's a slogan if ever I if ever I heard one. It's a bit long. <laughs> <laughs> Joking aside, this is pretty serious. With plenty of people out at this time of night, driving like this could have proved fatal. Um, Kitty, you're already under arrest. Uh, because we believe you're the driver of this car. And because I can smell what I believe to be drugs in the car, I'm now going to test you for drugs. You've had a joint, have you? Despite the confession, the driver is drug wiped, which proves one thing. He's telling the truth about smoking cannabis. 
you're already you're under arrest for failing to stop, uh, but you're now at 2148, also under arrest on suspicion of drug driving. OK? The car does belong to him, so he probably did a runner because he'd taken drugs. But the fleeing driver isn't the only one who needs to be tested. Technically, this lad's crashed. Um, it's the, the rules that someone will say, I've caused them to crash, therefore um, I have to provide a specimen of breath for analysis, um, and rightly so. There's no special treatment for cops when it comes to crashes. That's it. Spikes pass the test there, he obviously you've got alcohol in the system, but it's just like any other collision, any other member of the public, and a lot of people don't see that, but we treat our officers the same as a member of the public following a uh, road traffic team. Now it's time for Ian Squires and drugs dog Lottie to give the car a once over. She is thorough, isn't she? Yeah, 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 very thorough. And energetic? Yeah, very, very energetic. But it comes up clean. There's nothing in there. I don't think there's anything in the car now. Since no drugs were found and the car isn't stolen, the passenger hasn't committed any offence. So he's de arrested and allowed to go on his way. He's not all there this evening. He's had a smoke of a joint. Okay. He's told but, us but that. But there's, yeah. there's nothing you can do about that, which is no. why you've had to let him go. Yeah, that's right. Um, just because he smoked some earlier, he's got none on him now. Yep. It's not an offence to walk round or be driven around whilst yeah. stoned. While the passenger is allowed to walk off into the night, the driver isn't as lucky. So he's sitting in the cell sobering up, uh, and then in a few hours, it'll be me who asks him the questions. Was he driving? Why did he fail to stop? Yep. Why did he drive the way we did? OK. Uh, and we'll see where we go from there. The speeding driver was arrested for failing to stop, driving without insurance, driving without a licence and drug driving. The case is ongoing. Most of the crimes people worry about, burglary, muggings and assaults, are more likely to happen under the cloak of darkness. Crime doesn't rest. But fortunately, neither do the interceptors. It's the early hours of Tuesday morning. It's pitch black and interceptor Spike is in pursuit of a speeding people carrier. We've got a, a Cleveland unit now following a yes, car which is, which is uh, failing to stop and we are quite close by. Tango 330, we are in convoy, class one vehicle. Spike's after a Renault Scenic hooning around the streets of Hartlepool. Another interceptor has the car in his sights, but it's showing no signs of slowing down. The car hits 70 in a residential area before pulling off onto an estate road. The trailing interceptor is hot on its heels with Spike approaching fast. Yes, mate, we're in the middle of out out the Manor Estate. The runaway driver is outnumbered, outperformed, and ultimately... ..outdriven. The driver mounts the pavement and then tries to squeeze through a gap in some bollards. But he can't manage it and ends up high and dry. Out and running. <laughs> the man jumps out of what's left of the car, but it doesn't take long before he's caught, collared and cuffed. Johnny. Oh, you're well drunk, aren't you? Guess now I'm placed in this episode, number. You're completely smashed, that's what you are. You're as smashed as your car is. I best caution you. That's not a problem whatsoever. Do you understand what that means? I know exactly what that means. OK. Right, young man, you're under arrest on suspicion of failing to stop for the police and for dangerous driving. He was a good driver, though, wasn't he? Now, this chap may think he's a good driver, but, uh, I mean, look for yourselves. Can I tell you what? What? Are you, were you in the next five? No, I was in this car. Um, uh, we I, were... I've seen you on the telly before, right? If you were in that X5, I'd imagine you might have caught us, but them two lads couldn't, could they? To, to be fair, what this isn't is it's not a driving competition. We're not here to see who the best driver is. No, it's is. not. But when you know the blue lights go on, you should just stop. No, I'm not going to do that, am I? This lad seems to think it's all a joke, but this is no laughing matter. Someone could have been seriously injured or killed here tonight. Kind of look at the damage that's been caused. What if there'd been somebody stood there? 
I wouldn't be stood there now. I've got no sympathy for people like this. On the way to the station, the man still wants to chat about his driving prowess. Spike decides it's time to burst his bubble. Still want your boys in blue catching me, to be honest with you. Do you know what mode we were actually driving our car in? It wasn't in high performance mode. We were in Eco Pro, you know, we were saving the environment and also saving the good members of the public of Hartlepool from you. you all right? Back at the station, the bargain basement Lewis Hamilton is predictably over the limit. You're over the drink drive limit. You're not over massively, but you've had too much. OK? No, by that. For his late night booze fueled escapade, the driver was convicted of failing to stop, drink driving, driving without a license, driving without insurance, and failing to surrender to court. He was made to pay a total of £209 in fines and costs and disqualified for 16 months. Straight ahead, Justin. We saw earlier one of the ways that a dog can be useful for police work after dark. But I wanted to find out more, so I've arranged to meet the dog handlers from the arrest, Ian and Justin. Hello, fellas. Hello, mate. You all right? How are you? All right? How do you do? Very well, thank you. <laughs> you are not dressed for the weather, and that makes me nervous already. No, no. Um, so what are, we, um, what are we doing here at this disused chemical factory? It's one of our training venues for the dogs, um, and we're going to do a bit of a search scenario for you. With a sense of smell several thousand times better than our own, <laughs> the dog is a great tracking machine, invaluable day or night. Come. The darkness doesn't faze him. He's not bothered. Right, case. Case, done. So it's real teamwork between you and it Kaiser, is. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, so you can have a go? I'll have a go. <laughs> Anyone in the building? Police have entered with a dog. And he's quite angry. Last chance. Or the dog comes for you. Ready, Kaiser? Find it. And he's off. Immediately, Kaiser catches a scent oh, well and delves into the darkness. I'd call that an indication. Good lad. There's a good boy. How's that for you, Kaiser? I think you like me. Ish. <laughs> I think that I've bonded with Kaiser, but foolishly, I decide to put this to the test. So what, what I quite like to do now is I'll be the, I'll be the hunted. Really? Yeah. I see what it's like to be hunted by Kaiser. All right. Not bad at hide and seek. We'll see how he gets on. <laughs> this is thick. I can't even get it on. While I struggle with the jacket, Kaiser's fitted up with a military issue infrared camera. So Ian can see what it is that he's doing even in the pitch black. I'll give you 20 seconds, I should do. Give me. Give me 40. Will you? 40. You <laughs> all right, mate. It's all right. <laughs> all right. OK, we've got 40 seconds. <laughs> Dog sounds angry. Where am I going? Good lad. Ooh, here we go. OK. Oh, brilliant. In the, in the showers. And when you hear guys are barking, and to be fair, Ian barking. Show yourself or I send this dog to find you! I just, I mean, I'd give up. Last chance! Find him! Get him! Oh dear. Good lad. Good boy. Here, in. Good lad. I don't know if you can see on the monitor, but that's pitch black in there. He's working his way around. Get on, find him. He's given us an indication on the door in, off to that room on the right hand side. Game's up. Right, let's see ya! Nice and slowly, I'll drag and see ya! No sudden movement! Okay, I'll tell him to shower. Stand still! You're Kaiser made that look easy. And it's a good job they're such pros, as just hours later, I get to see what happens when training turns real as I head out with Ian and Kaiser for a Friday night shift. We've been called to reports of an unlicensed shotgun in a dark residential street. 
We're meeting the armed response there. They always like to have a dog unit for support. Ian gets himself and Kaiser ready for the worst. A fit German shepherd like Kaiser could beat Usain Bolt from a standing start, so anyone running would soon regret their decision. All he can do really there is just cover. You know, if he decided to run off, he's ours. Everybody in the house! All the police! Come on now! Put your hands where you can see them! It's a tense standoff and Kaiser may still be called into action. But thankfully, this time the suspect gives himself up without any trouble. The man was cautioned for the possession of cannabis, but with no firearms found, no further police action was taken. Is this a fairly typical operation? Yeah. When you're presented with a potential threat of a, of a weapon, and it's already been mentioned as a shotgun, and we've had a couple of reports where you can't, you know, you've got to go in fairly heavy handed. Yeah. You? They've got to know you mean business. So quite appreciated a, the fact yeah, that yeah. The, uh, the fellows with the guns also told us to stand quite well back. Yeah, yeah. I was very glad to do that. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, as far back as you need. <laughs> Still to come on Police Interceptors After Dark Special. I meet a victim of a horrific crash. My kids, it's hard for them as well as it's hard for me. And see what the police are doing to tackle nighttime speeding. That feels very beefy. And if I'm not mistaken, he's run the red light as well. And Spike gets a result. You beauty. Criminals operate night and day, but so do the interceptors. Anyone hoping to catch them napping is in for a shock. It's just after 9pm in Peterley, and Spike is out on another night shift. Hello, Tango 330. Following a vehicle in Basingstoke Road that is an RPU tasking, it's a Seat Cupra, I believe, or a Seat Leon. Just see what we know about it. Following a car that, uh, it's one I didn't know who it is, but it's pinged my NPR um, for believed to be dealing drugs. The car has markers on it that mean there's enough intelligence to suggest it's worth stopping, but that doesn't mean whoever's in it now is involved. I'm by a, what appears the vehicle is attempting to make off now onto Essington Way, Essington Way, Peterloo. It's now stopped, stand by for get all the drive. Hello there, you alright? Uh, just a bit of panic. Just switch this off. I've just written a bit of a panic. But, uh, I think they've been, bank card being. Sometimes people try to wrong foot the police by distracting them from the job in hand. But experienced coppers like Spike aren't easily deflected. From what I can see, there looks to be some cash in there. Yeah. Just keep your hands where they are. And just with the way how you've tried to make off, just put your hands down here. The man's acting strangely enough for Spike to think a drug search is a good idea. You are now detained for a drug search. Put your hands down normally. You were detained for a drug search. Do you understand that? I'm going to stop you from being able to jump around. Once he has the suspect cuffed and in the back of his car, Spike explains why he stopped him. But the man's not very chatty. My intelligence is that you're actually dealing cocaine. Is there any truth in that? Hey? If I was to pull over a normal member of the public, act on information that they're a drug dealer, they would be jumping up and down by now. The head would be banging off the roof, telling me that they're not. He's going to sit there and tell me nothing. This guy is clearly the silent type. Spike gets his torch. Maybe a search of the car will prove to be more illuminating. You beauty. In the centre console there is what I believe to be either cocaine or crack cocaine. Whichever it turns out to be, Spike knows one thing. Certainly illegal. You're now under arrest on suspicion of supplying Class A drugs. Just want to say anything. OK. Drug-related deaths in England and Wales are at an all-time high. Last year alone, over 370 people died after taking cocaine. And the area with the highest drug mortality rate is here in the northeast. Hello, Kira. In the light of the station yard, Spike can have a more thorough search of the car. 
and he quickly finds more things the silent driver might have trouble explaining in interview. Oh, so there's a further three bags that will either be cocaine uh, or more sinister crack cocaine. All in all, police find six grams of cocaine with a street value of £300, as well as an interesting message on his phone. And he had a text from someone telling him, watch out, the unmarked BMW is around. Facebook happens to have the, the sender of the text message on there. We know who he is. We know where he lives. Very soon I'll know what he drives. He might be in here next. Spike's investigation into the silent suspect is ongoing. While the night shift may differ in many ways from working days, one thing remains the same. You never quite know what it is you're going to get. So the police interceptors have to keep their wits about them and be ready for anything. It's 11.30 at night in central Darlington and I'm out with interceptor Demo in the traffic car. Oh, that's fresh. How are you doing? Anybody injured? Yeah. A bit sore, man. Right? There's a smouldering car half off a roundabout and a crowd of people gathered around. It's not immediately clear what's going on. Demo? Yeah? Car's on fire. Yeah, can you get fire, please? It looks like one of the cars are starting to go. When the police arrive on the scene of an accident, they need to work out what's happened as quickly as possible. No easy task in the darkness of a night shift. As I'm coming around the roundabout here, I've come around here, okay. and I just managed to swerve around. Around. So you haven't, you haven't been here. Literally, by the grace of God. Right. It looks like the car has mowed straight through the middle of the roundabout, destroying its front in the process, and nearly hitting other motorists as it came out the other side. Time for Demo to talk to the driver. How yeah. can you do that? It's 30 limit. Honestly, mate, I wasn't speeding. You see that car's a bit coming around and, yes. and, and naturally forced to go around there? Yes. Is that what you did? I, I was all a split second. I can't really? remember what happened. I caught up with an eyewitness to see what he thought had happened. The two cars were racing around each other. They must have been doing 60, 70 miles an hour. He swerved to the left to beat the other car, then tried to correct himself, he lost control of it, and come pulling through here. So he, Very lucky he's alive. There were two cars involved, the other two ones... Two cars involved. Where's, where's the other one going? I don't know, he just carried on. They're just absolutely traffic jacks. There are two sides to every story, and the driver claims he wasn't racing, but just happened to be going the same direction as the other car. Whatever the truth, it's clear that this was a life or death situation. It's very right, difficult to travel at 30 miles an hour there's no and to have the momentum to, to come this far. He says his brakes went. When I look at the path the car took after leaving the road, it becomes clear just how close a call this was. What a lucky boy. He's hit the curb there. He's shot straight across here. He's avoided this. Some, well, maybe he hasn't avoided it. He's gone up and over it because there's a mess here. He must have been going some. Front of the car has been completely crushed. Um, it was on fire. It's very fortunate that no one was killed. That's astonishing. It was decided that there was insufficient evidence to charge the young driver with racing, and the police took no further action. Luckily, no one was seriously injured in that crash but every year, over a 1,000 people are killed on our roads. And a disproportionate number of fatal injuries occur after dark. But a crash doesn't have to involve a fatality to devastate a family, as lead investigator Sergeant Johnny Stockold knows all too well. So what happened here, then? So it was the 2nd of January. Um, I was on duty. I was working a night shift. I um, got a call about quarter to ten to say there'd been a report of a serious accident. I could see that the, uh, the fence panels um, had been smashed and the car had jettisoned off the road. So can you walk me through what the car, as far yeah. as you could figure out, had done? The car had been travelling at speed. Uh, this is a 30 mile an hour uh, restricted zone. What sort of speed? It was upwards to 60, 70 mile an hour, so double right. the speed limit. Footage from a bus catches a glimpse of the car as it overtakes. It's a dangerous manoeuvre to do in the day, 
totally reckless at night. Seconds later, the car had skidded around a roundabout and then left the road on an overpass, smashing into the ground several metres below. We can see from the, from the, the markations that were left on the road uh, of the path that the vehicle took, and then there is quite a drop. Once it's hit that fence, it's only going one way, and that's it's going through the air and, and down the embankment. The driver was well enough to run off, but the guy in the passenger seat, Alex, wasn't so lucky. So whereabouts has it actually ended up then? Yeah. It's literally ended uh, sort of here. here. When I've got here, Alex has laid on the floor, being treated by paramedics, and he's got no sensation. And they're going through the, the, their pre-checks of, you know, to see if he's got any C-spine injuries. But at the time when he was laid on the floor, it didn't look, didn't look very good. Alex, a 28-year-old father of two young children, had fractured his fourth vertebrae, leaving him paralysed. I went to speak to him about the incident, but first I talked to his dad. So what condition is Alex in now? Well, he's now classified as a tetraplegic. He can move his arms, but he's got no control of his hands and he's got obviously he does can't move his legs. He's electric wheelchair for the rest of his life. He does his he's gonna do his bowel movement on the bed. He can't go on the toilet. It's a horrific situation for any young man to be faced with, and especially hard for one as athletic as Alex once was. When he was younger, he was nominated to go to Peter Lee in the England boxing squad. It's all finished, you know, that's all. And things like that still depress him. A big thing for him is his mental condition. He's uh, psychologically, he's, you know, he struggles big time. There are these times where he's said, Dad, you know, why can't I just die? The driver, Ian Morn, also known as Blue, had a long criminal record with 81 previous offences, including a string of driving convictions. At the time of the accident, he was disqualified from driving. In court, Blue admitted causing serious injury by dangerous driving and was jailed for three years and four months. The sentencing was just ridiculous. I mean, it wasn't the judge's fault, don't get me wrong. The judge said, I wish it would give you the same tariff as what you would get if you'd killed somebody. But unfortunately, it's 14, 14 years. years. Yeah. To be perfectly honest, someone said to me, what would you have wanted? I said, what, what sentence can you give him because he's took my son's life? I decided to ask Alex what he remembered about the events that led up to the crash. So talk me through that night then, Alex. What, what, what were you up to? Me and my mate jumped in. He started driving like a bit of a lunatic down Corton Road. Uh, and what was, he, what was he behaving like? He just tried to show off a bit, I think. Tried to help him slow down a bit. And the last bit I remember is the uh, roundabout. He basically lost control of the car because he was travelling at ridiculous speeds. Yeah. Blue left Alex, paralysed and slipping into unconsciousness next to the smashed remains of the car. Even now, every time I go to sleep, all I've pictured is my son laid there, and I thought he was dead. Alex had been wearing a seatbelt, but by the time the paramedics arrived on scene, he was laid outside the car. In his injured condition, Blue had pulled him out of the passenger seat to make it look like father of two Alex was the one driving. So what's your life like now then, Alex? No dignity left no more. Like, I, my kids, they like, can't do hardly anything. It, it's hard for them as well as it's hard for me. And so how do you feel when you kind of think about your future? Hard because I can't like say walk me out, dart down the aisle. I can't play football with my son. Can't do hardly nothing no more. Unsurprisingly, Ian has a message for anyone who thinks that speeding is fine. You're driving something that's a ton. It's a lethal weapon, and if you don't take care with that and watch what you're doing, you're you're going to kill and people. Are, dying unnecessarily and it needs to stop. It needs to stop now, not tomorrow, not in five minutes. It needs to stop now. Sadly, Alex isn't alone. Last year, almost 25,000 people were seriously hurt or fatally injured on Britain's roads. No one's arguing with the fact that speed kills, but until recently, there was no way for conventional speed cameras to work at night without using a flash. But all that has now changed. 
These are infrared lamps. By illuminating an area with light that's invisible to the naked eye, the special camera can get clear shots of speeders, even in pitch darkness, without startling drivers. So, mine, talk me through the setup here. What have we got? Uh, what I'm doing now is just um, setting the speed thresholds in. OK, and what are you putting them at? It's a, it's a 30 mile hour limit, so I set them at 35, so it will record anyone doing 35 or more. Right, and now we just sit and wait. You should see as the car goes through, it will illuminate it. That beep there tells you that it has taken the speed limit. OK, so we've just got someone there, haven't we? Yeah. As the law stands, you're technically liable for a fine if you go even one mile an hour over the limit. But speedometers aren't always accurate, so the guidelines give a margin of error of 10% plus two miles an hour. So anyone going over 35 in a 30 has no excuse and will get a ticket. He was not only doing 35. 57. There we go. Like anyone going over 50 in a 30, that driver's going to court. This van can be placed anywhere that there's been a speed-related crash. Presumably, back in the day, you couldn't use the no. camera vans That's as right. soon as night fell. No, you couldn't. Uh, so you're very much restricted to roads where there was a lot of light. Mm -hmm. But with this stuff, you can go on a road that's pitch dark. With tools like this, police hope to stamp down on those who think they can use the cover of darkness to get away with speeding. That feels very beepy. That's 54. Oh. And if I'm not mistaken, he's run the red light as well. So that, that's the sort of thing you're putting up with. You've got a, a life-changing collision up on the left-hand side there. You've got some biff going down here at 54 miles an hour, and he was braking by the time I clocked him. Now, that's the type of person we need to catch and get off the road. Get off the road, yeah. Stay with us, cos still to come on Police Interceptors After Dark Special, Spike is on the hunt for late-night drug drivers. What's your underpants doing in there? And I witness his famous powers of persuasion. I'm a great reader of people's mannerisms. I think you've got something on you. Whereabouts is it? You suck. The UK has amongst the highest rate of drugs use in Europe and a lot of that drug taking happens after dark. So at night time, when the pubs and bars start to close, the interceptors aren't just looking for drivers who've been drinking, but also for those who've been snorting or smoking anything they shouldn't. After police in England and Wales introduced roadside drug wipes like these, arrests have jumped by 800%. It is now the interceptors' weapon of choice when it comes to keeping drug drivers off our roads. I'm going to spend tonight based in the command centre, while Rick is heading out with Spike around Durham to see if he can catch any late night drug drivers. So Spike. Yeah. This is, this is her, isn't it? This is the Black Beauty. This is the Black Beauty. This is the best car we've got on the fleet. Um, incredibly stealthy. Uh, that's the name of the game for tonight. Um, the criminals of the world hopefully won't know who we are. That'll give us that added little tactical advantage of being where we need to be at the right time. Should we get in and give it a go? Let's go and see what happens. Spike's giving me a masterclass in being an interceptor, and lesson one is putting on the blues and twos. So it's over yeah. to you for, oh. the, for, for the green button. Very nice. That was very well done. Like, he's not going to think the person who turned those lights on is an amateur. He's going to be like... F full professional. It's half eleven and we've come across a man parked up in a deserted area. Your car stinks of green. Were you having a cheeky smoke here? No, I'm not. Right now, you're detained for a drug search. Do you understand that? In this line of work, a good sense of smell can sometimes be a bit of a curse. What's your underpants doing in there? And sometimes your best friend. Mate, what's this? That's the yeah, amphetamine. And it's not long before Spike sniffs something else out, a tin filled with cannabis. I've got to caution you. Are you aware it's illegal to uh, be in possession of cannabis and amphetamine? Yes, I am. When I've come out and had a word with him, he says he's just sitting here because he's got to go and check his crab pots. 
I don't know of any crab pots that, that's actually out here. So clearly he's telling me some lies. <laughs> it's a classic excuse. Though. Crab pots. I'm going to use it. Yeah. Yes, I've found some cannabis. And I've also found some white powder. Um, he says that's amphetamine. It's illegal. You know, so for, I, I need to check, or we need to check, that he's actually fit to be in charge of a car. I'm not sure that he is. So you're going to do a drug work? Yeah, that, I think that's what we should do now. Um, any thoughts about the underpants? I'm frightened to think why those underpants are in that door. A drug swipe proves that the man is below the legal limit to drive. So after his cannabis and amphetamines are seized, and after he accepts a police caution, he's free to go. It's now a few hours into the Saturday night shift, and while we're busy, we've yet to be called to a single job by the control room. It has to be said, Darren, it's been... Um a relatively quiet night. Yeah, we, we don't like the quiet word in the police force. No, <laughs> it's I'm, one of those words <laughs> relatively quiet. But, it, but, but it is, you're right, it is. Obviously, police don't mind it being quiet. That's a good thing. But there's an old police superstition that says, say the word, and it all goes crazy. But it is quiet. It's a far cry from when I went out on patrol with Spike. We had a pursuit almost immediately. He's off, he's off, he's off, he's off, look. Hey, Spike. Mate, we have no idea what's going on. For 20 years, I've worked the streets around here and I've never known it to be so quiet. I'm sorry to hear that, but you, you know full well why that is, don't you? Well, probably because my lucky charm's 20 miles away. Not, not to be ill of Rick, especially given that he's sat next to you, but... He, he has no talismanic powers whatsoever. All the criminals are scared of me, mate. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> They're all at home. <laughs> Using the monitors in the control room, I can follow exactly where Rick and Spike are and what they're up to. Interceptors like Spike can sniff out trouble from a mile away. Oh, here we go. Have a seat in the back here, killer. And I'm going to be honest, right? I can smell something. Is there any green in your car? No. I think we should now make sure he's actually fit to drive under the Drugs Act. Once. The faster the drug swipe works, the stronger the indication. I've only waited a couple of minutes. I meant to wait seven. Um, your test has come back positive for cannabis. Therefore, you're under arrest on suspicion of drug driving. Since he's unfit to drive, this guy will have to come to the station. But Spike's nose for crime is still tingling. I'm a great reader of people's mannerisms, and I think you've got something on you, have you? My grandma is. A grandma what? A cook. Grandma cook. Whereabouts is it? In your sock. It's in your sock. OK. With cannabis, amphetamines and cocaine seized from drivers, tonight the streets of Durham are a little safer, all thanks to Spike and the Interceptor's night shift. So after a night out with Spike, I think I've realised two things. Firstly, there's quite a lot of people out there with drugs, and that's no good, because you don't want people driving cars around. And the second thing is that with Spike around, those people aren't going to be getting very far, because he has an uncanny ability to sniff them out. So what have we learned? Um, well, it's hard work being on an interceptor night shift. You've got to be on your toes at all times ready for anything that might come up. And you're not only fighting crime, you're also fighting fatigue. I am really tired. <laughs> I am. I'm knackered. <laughs> you think you've got what it takes to be an interceptor? Think again. More blue light action next Monday at 8 with the start of all new traffic cops. Next tonight, a crisis in a tunnel is just the start of a day filled with emergencies in New Paddington Station 24-7. Over on Spike, Nick Wallace gets exclusive access to the UK's control rooms in new Caught on Camera.
Thank <laughs> you.